We're back. Hello, everybody. Hey. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew. And it's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? Yes, yeah, it, it is. is. So it's an actual Wednesday edition on the proper day. And uh, this is where we play new games on classic consoles, specifically Atari 2600. And I'm James, and this is... I'm Erilyn. I'm kind of here on Wednesdays. I seem to be the Wednesdays. <laughs> this is the third the Wednesday, Wednesday in a row. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And you came on the right day. Yeah. We've got, wow, a lineup of amazing work-in-progress games. It's not, it's not the third part of an RPG that I don't <laughs> no. understand what's happening. What is, what is this game? I don't have to draw maps today. No, no draw maps, just straight on playing. You didn't even get to play last no, time, No, that's actually. all good. I like being the, the cartographer, <laughs> if you That's will. great. So we've got a, a roster of six games, and they range in completeness from just being started to, like, almost done like wow. that close to being done so it's it's all in there and we've got some really new games like unseen before you know uh techniques to get to make these games work i don't really know a hell of a lot about homebrew i'm sort of the the audience member here but you were telling <laughs> me before that some of these people are like the superstars like there's some pretty amazing developers. heavy hitters yeah yeah the ones that are at the forefront of pushing the envelope of what the 2600 can do with like you know add-on boards and add-on processors within the cartridge where it's almost to the point where the game is being done on a very advanced processor and just spitting out things to draw on the screen wow rather than getting the atari 2600 to do the work right so it's doing the work beforehand but we'll get to that that's Interesting. that's, that's the second game but um. we'll get to that yeah we have some some heavy hitters today in terms of uh games and programmers so and, uh, uh, and spiceware says howdy howdy spiceware. howdy spiceware glad you could join us today and he's got uh Two games, actually. Oh, amazing! In uh, in the games that we'll be I playing today. I see. It says today. Timmy and Frantic. I don't know if that's the, those are the games. Those are the okay, games. Okay, great. Yeah, those are the two games that we're gonna play of his. So let me just. Uh, so we're gonna be playing Ardvark, Boom, which I believe Boom has never been seen before. Wow. Okay. And Ardvark, this version has never been seen before either. This is <clears throat> almost cartridge ready. This okay. version. And the last version to be publicly released was quite a ways back, bef um, you know, a couple months, and a lot of things have changed, so hang tight. And then there's Homestar Runner RPG. Uh, do you know anything about I Homestar Runner? I remember playing, uh, watching Homestar okay, Runner good. when so I you was... know a little bit about When it. I was nine. <laughs> <laughs> so you... Oh, jeez. <laughs> or no, I might have been 11. Please bump up that age. Oh, I, was, I was I was 17. Making me feel old. Oh, <laughs> That's not good. I was a child, though. I was, yeah. I was, I was, I was not in puberty yet. <laughs> I don't, we'd have to figure out when. But uh, We're going to also be playing Avalanche and timmy and frantic cool so six games and some of them aren't games per se that you can play too long so that's why we have six that's why i got a bunch that's yeah. fun though it's like a mixtape it is it is a mixtape <laughs> you know you got the upbeat songs you got the ballads that's you know? right you, you got a good mix of everything you take it home with a makeout song <laughs> that's you know? right it's the home star runner rpg <laughs> <laughs> that's right um so yesterday or monday uh, we were playing around with this brand new thing, uh, the Retron 77. Wow. Uh, yep, yeah, you guys can see it there. Yeah, it's kind of coming in out of focus. There we go. Um, and it was a mixed bag. It yeah. Was, it was kind of good, kind of bad. Uh, just a recap for you, for those people who um, weren't here for the Monday show or haven't seen it in the YouTube archives. Um, it's small. It's fairly sturdy, except for the joystick. Joystick's been breaking all over the place for people. Yeah. It doesn't accept a lot of cartridges. It has a hard time reading it. Not a good thing. That's rough. It doesn't play some of the games, especially New Homebrew, which is bad. It doesn't sound like a good review. I'm just, <laughs> it's just... not. <laughs> uh, um, it has a lot of screen tearing, 
So the vertical sync is it's is not awesome. It's not awesome. It's actually not even there. Um, because they used a very old version of the emulator in the system, um, which doesn't enable the yeah. V-Sync. So there's tearing all over the place. So the output is headache-inducing on some games that are that have a lot of scrolling. Um, so in conclusion, mm. I'd give it a wait. I wouldn't give I... it a buy. I wouldn't give it a pass either. But I'd give it a wait until... They kind of work out some of these kinks. Yeah, either the company works out some of these kinks themselves, which mm, some companies don't care after they release things. They just go, yeah, it's done. Yeah, we finished. We made our money. All the people well, it's bought it. it's so hard it. to build something to begin with. So by it the is. time you hit release, it's, sometimes it's hard to go back. Yeah, and do you have money for that, for more development? Maybe Or you got to move on to a new project just creatively. Yeah. And this is one of tons of projects that these guys do. Hyperkin mm -hmm. release a lot of yeah. um, kind of retro consoles that you put cartridges in. So it looks amazing. Yeah, the look <laughs> the look is really nice. I mean, I'll show you guys. I mean, most people have it by now. Uh, on Monday, I was probably the first guy to stream this on the internet, but it has a really nice look. Uh, yeah, it looks classic. It feels of, like the dashboard of like a of like an old car. You there know? we go. Yeah, so it's got the wood grain. It's got, oh, it's having trouble focusing. It's like on me. There we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll both hide behind it. <laughs> and then we'll... There we go. There, and it's got the ridges, and it's got HDMI out, which is the big bonus. But it is just an emulator. It's yeah. like taking a Raspberry Pi, sticking it in a nice, in a cool case, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, but the bonus with the Raspberry Pi is you can actually use the newest version of Stella it on keeps its get, than yeah. this one from 2012. Wow. That's an old version of the emulator in terms of internet time. Oh, that's God, forever. Yeah. yeah, so I give it a wait. Some people are already hacking it. They've updated the <laughs> of version. Of course they are. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they are. They love yeah, hacking yeah. it. Um, they've updated the version to a tiny bit newer, but nothing that solves the big problems, yeah. um, unfortunately. Spiceware said he showed Boom to a few people at PRGE, so some people have seen have seen this, but probably most people haven't unless you were at last year's PRGE. Um, so the first game we're going to be playing is Aardvark, cool. and it is an update, because we have seen it on the show before. Okay. Um, it's but, the first time I've seen it. Yeah, so it'll be new to you, maybe new to some people out there. And uh, but the graphics and the and the sounds and the animations have all been updated to look really good. The name sounds like something you would buy from IKEA. You would go and <laughs> it's you, the Ards 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 Bar. Bar. I mean, it's just like you know a thing you rest your feet on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so let's switch over to that, and. So we'll go into Ardvark. And then top that, one? No, go down to right the bin. There. Yep, there we go. Oh, okay, cool. So oh yeah, I get first play. That's right. So, okay, cool. I'll turn up the volume of the sound on there. So, don't press fire yet. Okay, even <laughs> so though it's telling me. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't listen to the computer. So the primary uh, person, uh, developer, is Nano Chess, And the, you can see the intro screen is brand new. Well, you can't see. So, but the intro screen is new, and it's already gone to uh, gameplay. Um, it's auto playing right now. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and you can see the graphics have already been like massively updated. Um, like the underground dirt area used to be like solid bands of yeah. color, and now it's got like little flecks in it. The animation of the Ardvark at the top has been like completely updated. Wow. It's really really good. Um, so you can go ahead and start up a game. Let me just give you the basics. So you have to eat all the dots. It's like Pac-Man, but different. <laughs> so you have to eat all. Uh oh. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. So I am the anteater. You're the anteater. Okay. Um, you have to eat all the dots. Oh, there you go. So let's just go with the basics. Okay. So just start. Yeah. Go down to start. And as soon as this thing gets to the hole, then it starts the game. So eating the ants is fine, and you want to eat them with the front of your oh, tongue. Oh, I see. Not the worms. You can't hit worms, though. Yep. Uh, the flashing ants at the bottom, those are like power pellets. Okay. Except it just gets rid of everything off the screen oh, for a God. while. Oh, God, okay. 
<laughs> I've already. I've already. You're getting there. Okay, okay. So you do have to clear the screen of all the red um, dots on the screen. Or else I'm done. Okay. Yeah. And you can eat the ants from any direction. Those worms can pass through your tongue, no problem. But the ants can't pass through the back of your tongue. So there's one coming right now. Oh, I see. And the button retracts your tongue all the way back to the top. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So um, on this one, try and go down. Yeah, it has improved a lot. Now press the button. There you go. And it retracts your tongue. Oh, okay. So you're going to you put yourself in a difficult position. <laughs> wow, okay. This is, okay. This is a tricky game. So I'll let you play around with it for a while, and I'll read out some information about the updates. What, ha what happened? The ant. There okay. you go. Oh, okay. What about this this blue fella? Just let him pass through your tongue, but you have to get out of his way. Get your t Yeah, there you go. So uh, this was uh, programmed by NanoChess, uh, Oscar Toledo G. Um, and he's working with Thomas Yentz and Nathan Strum in the development of Aardvark. Uh, Thomas Yentz is doing the, um, doing the coding of the, uh, oh, now the name escapes me, uh, doing all the coding for the, the routines, the, the drawing routines. And uh, Nathan Strum is doing the animation and graphics, I believe. Um, recently we got to a milestone of completion game No Bugs, and we'll be working also in a few enhancements more. Hello, Ground Trooper. Hey, Ground Trooper. Better late than never. Got tied up in traffic on an errand. That's okay. We just started. We just started playing the first game, so you haven't uh, missed wow, too much. This is... uh, it's significantly different from the version released in the Aard Aardvark thread in Atari Age, so you can go and download the old version. Oh. oh, you can't eat them backwards. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. Um, I've redesigned the core to allow the tongue to go up and down in tunnels. So before you could only go down. Oh, I can't eat them backwards. Oh, you can't. Try. How the hell did I get them last time? Interesting. Oh, maybe you can eat them on the retraction. I try. Oh. Or was it, were you pressing the button to let retract? Me, let me try and let's try this out real quick. Nope. No. No. I don't know. Maybe he has to run into you. Maybe I had just insane luck. It does look amazing. It is unbelievable. Almost better than the arcade in some ways. Like, the arcade doesn't have that top graphic with all the, the hills and the sun and everything. It looks way better than the arcade, which usually on a 2600 game, you're like, Yeah, that just no, doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Usually the arcade is always better because it has more advanced oh, um, hard to get um, processor. Oh, you can use angles. Okay. So if you do to the right and down, he'll he'll use his tongue and go down. Wow, this is. <laughs> I'm clearly not equipped for this ant eating business. <laughs> you'll man. get it. You'll get Holy it. And after cow. I play, you'll you'll see a bit yeah, more. Yeah, you, you, this is. I'm where... not an expert. This is a hard game. I do have to warn you. It is challenging. Cause see, this is so like, what do I do now? Do I just avoid him by going down the tunnel? I'm just too late now. Fucked. Okay, cool. Yeah. I see. I see. <laughs> um. Yes, here it is. Uh, I've redesigned the core to allow the tongue to go up and down in tunnels, include game options, and it's been enhanced with a completely new display kernel by Thomas. As you can see, the display kernel is unbelievable. The animations, um, the the graphics, the ability to... So he just passed through your tongue just fine. Yeah, okay. I've realized I can't retract or anything when he does that. So then this uh, guy okay. just like... Uh, and animated graphics by Nathan. In case you want some trivia about the development, it's 208 iterations and eight months ahead of the latest published ROM. Wow. So they've done 208 updates since the last I'm time. Fucked, I think. No, go to the right and then down. Ah, oh, but it was just because he was... But you can eat the end, so that's fine. Uh, so 208. Oh, how big is it? That is a good question. I believe it's... Oh, there we go. It's, it's down at the bottom. So it went from 8K to 32K. Obviously, what do I do with this spider, man? I think you avoid him. Okay. Avoid everything but the ants. I'll, I'll get to that. Oh, no. Oh, the ant hits you. Yeah. You have to eat the ant. Yeah. Um, and eight months ahead of the latest published ROM. It now includes eight tunnels, like in the arcade. The graphics are significantly better than the arcade ones, he says. So he's bragging about that. Yeah, definitely the top. And the animations I oh, like I better than the arcade. 
um, because the arcade had some simple animations. The animations for the sprites use more than two frames, three frames, or five frames. The aardvark alone is 18 animated frames, which is probably unheard of for most Atari games, like 18 frames of animation. So watch his tongue, watch his body when he eats an ant. It goes through his mouth into his stomach. It's unbelievable. Uh, the sprites now use fractional pixel speeds, wow. which is awesome. Come on, buddy. Thomas made an impressive switch between day and night with a beautiful sunset. So you can see the sun is moving to the right right now. It's it's amazing. Oh, because this guy's I see what's up. Uh, Nathan had a great idea to make the animation for the aardvark uh, as controls go left and right. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's moving. His head's moving, and he's kind of wiggling up the top when he's moving his tongue. That is awesome. Although we no longer look like arcade mode, the behaviors are rather similar, but we put an option for modern mode where the tongue moves faster. Oh, it's in nighttime now. Very cool. I got a, what do I do about this guy? Uh, just avoid him. Just no, just go down and get out of the cool. way. Yeah. Uh, the behaviors are rather similar, but we put an option for moder modern mode where the tongue moves faster. So I think you're in modern mode right now. Yeah. And there's another mode, arcade, where the tongue moves slower. So, no, get out of the way. Well, yeah. I, well, I don't know down. what to do. Cause... Oh, you'd have to move down, around, and get the ant from behind. Oh, I can kind of go up? I see. Yeah, you can go up. Uh, Ground Trooper says, 32, that, 32K, that explains everything. So sweet. I'm glad to have some credit sitting in the AA store. Oh, you must have sent in some... Uh, some ET cartridges. Because <laughs> so you can send in ET cartridges for uh, credit at the, at the Atari Age Store. Or at any other cartridges that oh, are ton. There's tons of like combat or anything like that. This is a must-buy. It was a must-buy from the PRGE preview last year, but now it is a no-brainer. That is for sure. This is like insta-buy. Uh, it says Atari Age will be publishing this game in physical form. And it should be out. I'm sure it'll be out by PRGE this year um, in October. Um, so this was originally um, an arcade game um, from 1982, put out by Tago Electronics. Um, the game has four different critters, which the anteater can get to score points, and each of them have different point values. Ant larva are worth 10 points. Those are the little red dots. They're ant larva. Okay, I'm, I'm understanding this game a little bit better. Yeah, it's not dying so fast now. Yeah. That's like a crab? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, uh, ants are worth 100 points. Worms are worth 200 points. And the queen ant is worth 1,000. Damn. Is that's that the, the bottom, bottom one? one? Yeah, I, I think be. so. It hasn't talked about the crabs yet. You cannot touch the worm's head but you can munch him from behind. So if you get the worm from behind, that's fine. Okay. I see, oh my god, oh my god, dude. We're almost there. Yeah, you gotta clear off the top. Or you could get the flashing guy in the bottom. You can like go right to the bottom and it'll clear the board. So you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. So if the ants start coming again, just go left and right. Oh, not that, oh, nope. Oh, oh you killed yourself. Uh, you cannot touch the worm's head, but you can munch him from behind. Worms and spiders cannot be killed unless they reach the tip of your tongue. Okay. Uh, cannot be killed unless they reach the tip of your tongue. Oh, weird. The spider comes out at night and travels down the tongue until it reaches the tip. Oh, the spider hits your tongue and goes all the way down, so you may want to reserve a, a flashing ant for that one. Uh... It can only be removed by eating a queen ant. Yeah, so those are the bottom ones, the queen ants, which clear all the critters from the screen. The screen. The days get shorter as the game progresses. Uh, consequently, the spiders come out earlier. The spider is truly the nemesis of this game. <laughs> Letting them pass by. Ah. So you can only get the the worms from behind. Find but, it. But they're totally. Oh yes. Oh yes. yeah. Should have waited just a bit more. Second more. It's it's it's. I do find the controls hard on the, the going down. You have to be very precise. Use the angles to your advantage. Oh, I see. So you kind of sort of slant it a bit, and you're totally fine. The game was ported to the Atari 2600 by Mattel in 1983, but was never published. 
There does exist a prototype and a ROM of the game, but has never been released due to undisclosed reasons. Uh, the prototype was displayed for the first time at Classic Gaming Expo in 1999 uh, in Las Vegas. So you can see screenshots of that prototype online, but there's no ROM, so that's... Oh, gotta wait. Yeah, gotta wait. Um, and there exists only screenshots of which don't appear to include any larva in the maze, so it looks fairly unfinished. Okay. Okay, okay. James. You're almost there. Oh! Okay, just go left and right, you're done. Oh, I've got the fro- okay. It's only taken- this game's grown on me. It took yeah. me a while at first. It is hard, it's not easy, even the first level. Uh, I'm just understanding these mechanics is, but I, I'm get I'm starting to see like the how everything kind of fits. Yeah. 7,800 shells. Oh, that's what you traded in. Spiceware says looks like Scarlet, the dragon in medieval mayhem, has more frames of animation. Oh, Spiceware up up, one up them. This oh, one has uh, how many? 18. Oh, I made it to, okay. So it's time to pass it over. I made past yep. level one. That's good. I feel so, like I've, I've grown as a person. That dragon in medieval mayhem is amazing. The the graphics and animation, so that has more. Oh, oh hey, you gotta wait, because he gets there, and then you can do your thing. No, it's like the demo. Oh, is it? It doesn't let you bypass the demo. I guess you have to do reset. This that could be something you could put in, is the button can get out of the demo mode rather than pressing the reset. Yeah. So, yeah, level one, lives three. Mode, mode modern. modern. We'll keep with cool. the modern for now, and then the next round we'll do uh, the arcade. Well, that sounds good. A uh, ton of pole position two and other red label commons. Okay. Oh, too far. Yeah, that's how I got killed like every yeah. time, man. That's the hardest bit. And I was way down at the bottom. I sometimes didn't realize there was like a, a spider like right there. Yeah, Medieval Mayhem is amazing. That was the first PRGE I went to, and I got my Medieval Mayhem signed Ooh, by Daryl. So I, I have met up. you before, Daryl. You probably don't remember me because it was many years ago, and, and I wasn't. Uh, oh, it's the top one, the man. One. And uh, I wasn't streaming back then, so you wouldn't recognize my face, but now you would. <laughs> yeah, this anteater looks pretty amazing, man. Oh my god, yeah. He's really I don't big know, graphics. What are you going to do here? Uh, you wrap make around? It, make it, oh, yeah, there you and go. Do that. That's smart. That's what you got to do when yeah, he's you gotta... behind. So... Get that ant. Get that ant. Clear it off. Oh, I see. That can be very tactical. Uh, yeah, w w use your... And you also don't want to go down any side ones too much. Oh, yeah. Oh, smart. Yeah, there you go. You Wait for the clearing the bottom to use those up because it's just so much to retract. Looks better than oh, Oil's the Well. Mountain King. Yes. That's cool. Great song, of course. Looks better than Oil's Well and the Atari 8-bit. Yeah, Oil's Well is a very similar... I mean, there's been lots of games that are, you know, underground. Oh, too much. It's but very I can fast see you're using. Yeah, you're using the retraction to your advantage, though, man. But, yeah, you got to be careful of that. So let's go to the arcade version. Okay. And this is a slower tongue. I'm not sure if there's any other differences. You didn't list them. Because it's the same graphic. This is... Oh, yeah, yeah, dude, I'm fucked. No. Oh, you'd have to go around really it was even quick. The, even the way they were there, it was... I think you were, you were screwed. It was, it was right, off the, right off the bat, man. That's okay. Yeah. Even this is rough. Like, I don't... Uh, no, go left and then retract and then down immediately. How, How did, did that happen? Okay, I'm I think lucky. you have protection when it's right at the beginning, maybe. Because you're supposed... You're able to hit... Oh, it is because it's the beginning of your tongue and the end of your tongue. When you're just like that, I think. Because you can kill the worms by going in behind them. So you could go down and all the way to the right and get the worm and the ant. Go. Oh, I see. So I'm going to like... Oh, I see in them. Spiceware, nice. Uh, MM is amazing. I don't play Warlords anymore. <laughs> Lol. Yeah, of course. It's totally surpassed Warlords in its uh, ability. Medieval Mayhem. 
and uh, yeah, yeah and the retraction's slower too so this modern uh, one is okay modern's faster for faster gameplay yeah which Ooh. so that guy's going to travel down your tongue and you're going to have to get one of the queen ants oh yeah oh, I missed it I see uh, some are of the frames are for one of the Easter eggs. Okay, where Scarlet dances above the credits. Yeah, that's the dragon, Scarlet. We got yeah. a second cat. Oh, hi. Is the first one still here? Uh -oh. No. This is Atari Cat. Hi, Atari. Where did you get your name from? We'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Spice Wars says... What is this, Atari? <laughs> oh, get the ad. Or no, you're fine. Yeah, well, well, you're I still just... fine. Oh, oh no, yeah. no, definitely done. Spicer says, "Yeah, it's hard to remember people when you met so many of them." I met Metal Jesus at the yeah, first PRGE that I went to. He was all excited to meet me and get Space Rocks autograph, but he didn't remember me last year for Draconian's release. He didn't remember you, but he was excited to meet you. That's really weird. That's really strange. So let's try out this arcade mode, which I think will be harder. Oh, it's way harder. So That's... if I stick there, I shouldn't. See how fair is that? That's rough. You gotta like just I had go for it. Like two seconds to go. I wouldn't have been able to make that. Look, it's the same deal. <laughs> it's it's the, the same, same thing, deal. man. You gotta, I gotta go, go immediately to the left, or you're done. Oh no, he can pass through. That's right. Okay. okay. So, but so it's that's just fine. you just gotta be quick. Yeah. But yeah, you see, this is a lot harder. Is this probably the original arcade speed? Yes, that makes a lot of sense. Which, I mean, you're more controlled because it's slower. Oh my god! It's too much for traction! <laughs> yeah, this is, this is not an easy game. This is... Okay, so... Oh, okay. That was close. That was ridiculous. That it could've... almost killed me r immediately. Yeah. I wonder if it would have. That's just not fair at all. <laughs> get that worm. Oh, you're nope. done. Fuck. Oh, yeah, because I... Well, no, not necessarily. I you, might you have been close. able to. Yeah. Can I have this another is... one? Oh, of course, dude. That was rough. <laughs> that wasn't even a game. That was... Yeah. Well, that last one was my where... mistake, but one of them was like... Again? What? Look at this. Good. Bastard. <laughs> Get him out of spite. So the trick is to retract and then stop just before and then this... manually do it. But you got to Yeah, you got to retract, dude. Either. Oh, yeah, yeah. Damn, I got to watch. Come on. Yeah, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It is. It's it's clearing, clearing, clearing out. Oh, damn it. Okay, I gotta go around, get him, then wait, retract, go back up. Ooh. Get him. Ooh. Okay, that was Brutal. a good one. Yeah. Getting a little, getting a little bit better. Yeah. But still, some of these ants are fast. Yeah, that's where you almost need to. You definitely need those those like ones at the at the bottom. I think so. I gotta get, get down there. Go and clear these out immediately. When I yeah. okay. Oh no! Now I'm dead. Now I'm very dead. Because I can't get because this, this spider f crawls down your it's tongue. Tough, man. So you can't and retract this, past. You have to. This go where on the modern version it'd be better. You, you can almost quickly. It's a, you just gotta get down to that bottom and just just right away clear out. That might be the tactic actually. Go go to the. It's rough, a worm man. and an ant. Yeah. Yeah, that might be the best tactic. Go right and clear out the bottom as quickly as you can. Ah! Do another one. Another one? Yeah, give it another go. Okay. It's rough, man. Yeah. And then we can go back to the mud. I think it's a little easier. Oh, it's way easier. This is a Am challenging... Am I going to die? No. no. <laughs> Luckily not. It's been close, though. <laughs> really close. That was like half a second. To death, to death. I'm gonna go right to the bottom. No, I can't. <sighs> yeah, it's like was. it's like once you're down there, you're almost wise just to wipe out like the two. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a cat over there? I don't think so. Uh, some just fell down. That's okay. 
This is not an easy game. Okay, the worm is like, okay, I just have to go left and get out of the way. That's fine. We lost our, we lost our cat, yeah. folks. That's okay. That's he's okay. done. He's, he's, the ground is a lot more interesting right now. <laughs> oh, let's get that one. Oh, too much. Sometimes I see little creatures come in and then they, they go out immediately. Like, they're like, nah. Change like, no, my mind. Changing. Yeah. Have you seen that? Where it's like a little blip on the side and then it goes away? It's really weird. Oh god. This is where, yeah, you almost just need. Now you just need now to. Now I have to go down and get that. Uh, okay, I have to just I go just for have it. To go just for push, it. push, push, push. And then clear out this. It's another spider immediately. I just. I just okay, do it. I have to do it again. Another spider immediately. Yeah. Is that how it works? Like, push, 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 I'll be able push. to make it. Yeah. You can make it. Wow, Ooh. that's not an easy game. <laughs> that's not easy. That's, that's some stuff. That's some serious. Yeah, this is this is challenging. So f I got 14 ants and I got two worms. Ooh, that didn't stay on very long. Got a little bit of bonus. Wow. So I'm guessing the differences on levels would be faster ants, more ants. Different creatures. This is like a slug. Check, look at that. Uh, just different color. Uh, I think it's the same color. It's a worm. It's what? a worm? Oh, the ant got me. Last life. Look at that. What is... Am I going to die? No, no, it's okay. The worm got past yeah, I bet he timed it so the worm just gets past. Yeah, it's like stressful it's... stuff, though, man. It's it not... is very stressful. Ugh. A lot of tongue retracting on level two, I'm predicting. Just, like, constantly to, to fight off the levels that you're trying to complete. Oh, God. You're done. I gotta get down to the bottom. No. Okay. Let's okay. go back to the, the easier, the faster one, the modern. Got a little bit more to say here. Uh, Thomas Yentz. I hope I'm saying that right. I think I've got it down. Yentz? Yench? Yench. That's it. Yench. I'm sorry, Thomas. <laughs> he, said sorry, he, would, he said he would be here today. He's not here yet, but. Uh, Aardvark has made significant progress in the last months, but there's still some things to do, like game balance. Yeah, it's hard as hell. <laughs> yeah, this is not a. <laughs> like, <sighs> Hard as hell. Like usually, I, after a couple games, you get a little bit better. I have to tell you, man, the first like four games was it was not even like <laughs> they weren't even. You can call them games. <laughs> just death. They were just me. <laughs> just dying. Yeah. Difficulty ramp up. Yeah. Uh, game variations. Uh, extras like save key support, um, so you can save your high scores. Some more polishing and debugging. So far, I haven't run into any bugs, except I've seen little guys come out for a second. They go bloop, bloop, and they run away, which can be a bonus. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's, not kinda, a bug. it's not a bad know. thing. It's just kind of weird. They go bloop, bloop. Um, nevertheless, the game is, in my opinion, already more complete than too many rushed releases. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Some people just want to push it out there, and it's like, oh, good enough, let's get it out there, I want to get this to the people. Yeah. Uh, it's really nice when people take their time and, and do... Re I saw a worm come out the right-hand side, then it came out the left. So I think that is a bug. I'm going to watch to see... Yep. Another oh, worm God. slipped on the top there, and then came out two below. So it's almost like it's like, oh, I want to come out, and then, no, I changed my mind. It should be on this level instead. So that does look like a bug rather than, I mean, a literal bug too. Um, but yeah, it's nice when people take their See, time. At this point, my plan is go for the bottom. I think it's a good because you've cleared out almost everything except for the bottom. Yeah, go for it again. Oh, you missed some, oh, missed I, some points. A thousand. Oh, I should have killed him. Oh man, you got four thousand seven hundred seventy-three thousand. Those are they're big points. What am I doing? Okay, so but let's, like, I couldn't have gotten to level two on before. A, no. Oh, and the other the arcade, on the arcade mode. No, no, it's too hard. 
because just for with my with my uh, skill level. Because <laughs> the tongue's just it clears out the level easier. Right? Yeah, and you can kind of retract a little bit too. Yeah, it's just faster and easier. Let's see, like yeah, see a situation like that, right? That's where you just take the risk. Yeah, you have to just go for it. So on the bottom left is how many lives you have left, and it looks like a little key or something. And on the right, looks like a fire thing. That's uh, what level you're on. And the points in the middle. Yeah, beautiful graphics, amazing animation, like unbelievable, great huge graphic for the uh, aardvark slash anteater. Um, and the animations are, go down. Oh, no, you don't have to, but eh, <laughs> I thought it was an ant at first. Level, level three, dude. That's awesome. Okay, this is, I, I, again, it's I could not serious, do this on serious now. But I'm I'm learning that that's the way to do it. it. Once you, if you can get down to that, then you. Ooh, nice colors on this wow, one. Wow, man, this is looking amazing. Yeah. This is looking like the Retron 77s. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not an advanced game. It, Cart. This wouldn't. This wouldn't work on it. No, I mean the 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 the, the colors. Oh, the, the coloration. Oh, mean. the wood paneling. Yeah, yeah it's, it's got that. Like uh, it's got that uh, Atari 2600 wood paneling uh, going on there. Oh, yeah. I might be fucked. Uh, not even unless you go right to the bottom uh, and get the. Going. Oh, I was gonna see if I could. No, I should have. Oh. Should have just gone right right for the bottom. Okay. Yeah, you can give it a go if you want. No, I think or we got to move on. One? Cool. We got six games to get through. Um, so the next one is, uh, let's switch over. That's fun though, man. I like the modern version. Yeah, the modern really makes it a little bit more fair, like a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more fun. I mean, it's good to have that in there, the arcade version, so you can play as close to the arcade. Well, I think if I got really good at the modern version, then you can kind of master. It feels like easy mode, hard mode. Yes, that's true. I'd almost call it that if it were me, but I shouldn't be. Uh, I shouldn't. <laughs> I shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's the next? The next game is Boom. So Boom. This was released or uh, given to me three days ago. I don't know when it was actually. Let me switch over. There we go. Oh, there you go. I don't know when this was actually programmed, this one, um, but that's... I feel like that's not... Oh, wow. So you know this. Yeah, that, normally that would be a bad move. Yeah, it was just... I was <laughs> feeling like... So this is Boom by Chris Walton, a.k.a. CD-W, uh, who is the author of Juno First and Star, Ca Star Castle Arcade, both uh, amazing, amazing games. Okay, um, where am I supposed to go? There you go. Um, so here is something that I've been working on called Boom that has not yet been posted on Atari Age. I'm supposed to kill all these guys? Is that kill the those idea? guys. Kill those balloon dudes. Is it, once I kill all the balloon guys, do I win? Is that how it works? Yes. And then a door comes and you go through the door. Except you don't. But we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> I don't go through the door just because it's... Because uh, you can't. Okay. Um, that has not been posted on Atari Age. So this... Oh! He's in the uh, chat. Dude, the guy who created this is yep. in the chat? C hey, dude. CD dash W. <laughs> he spelled it out. I guess maybe it doesn't allow dashes. That's just fun. He says, the hills are glitching when the aardvark walks off the screen. Some timings for yes. uh, Thomas to fix later. Mm -hmm. Oh, he wrote this in 2017. So this, this version's 2017. Welcome, CD dash W, a.k.a. Chris. Um, it uses an experimental technique called bus stuffing. To push the Atari further than ever before. Now, can you confirm that this is? Uh, I can't. This is the first game. Like it is a game. I like his little uh, little hands when he runs. Yeah, good animation Come there. On. Is this the first um, functional game to use bus stuffing? Because everything I've seen in the uh, forums. It's mostly like demos or, you know, things to show off, like pictures of uh, parrots and pictures of cars and yeah. stuff. Um, unfortunately, development has stalled as this technique is incompatible with some 2600 consoles, mostly junior models. Okay, so I've killed all the guys now. Yep, so go find... The, actually, just keep blowing up the, uh, the bricks, I guess. Um, however, 
Uh, I thought you might want to include it in your show. Is it a good demonstration? Oh, gotta kick the cat out. Yeah, he's wrecking. He's wrecking stuff, man. Yeah. He's starting to say bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Um. Sorry. Oh no, it's all good. I started watching the <laughs> the other screen real quick. Oh. Uh, two left, so where are they, man? Oh, Spiceware used bus stuffing for Draconian before the reboot. Oh, I didn't know that there was bus stuffing in Draconian. Whoa. Oh, before the reboot. Okay, so it was used but not in the final version of Draconian. Okay. So technically no, not the first game released. Not the first game put out to use bus stuffing. Um, uh, it's a good demonstration of what the Atari can do when pushed to the very edge. It manages six sprite updates, including color, per scan line, and single pixel horizontal scrolling. Oh, check it out. So, Which I believe is a first is for a 2600 homebrew game. That's the exit. But I can't go into it? No, because it's not a full no. full game yet. So I'll just reset it, if we can. Nope, can't reset. That's not okay. built in. But I'll let you um, hold down the B button. Okay. And then you can go back to it and start blowing up the dudes. Nope, you didn't hold down the B button. Sorry. Hold it down until you see the screen. There you go. Cool. So Games. this is oh, shit. the first game. Should I go back? Which one do we got? Uh, today's date, the 7-Eleven. Perfect. And Boom. there you go. Um, so this is the first game to do single pixel horizontal scrolling left and right because before in the early days of the 2600 it uses um, use play field graphics for drawing the basic usually for the maps yeah and those at their smallest is four, are four pixels wide so any kind of uh, horizontal movement in Atari 2600 games, it had to be four blocks at a time. So quite chunky and quite jarring. Um, but if you got the game moving fast enough, it wasn't too bad, the scrolling. Vertical scrolling is actually amazing on a 2600. You can do per pixel and it looks, looks awesome. Um, and six sprite updates. Uh, including color, which before there's only two, and you would have to um, time splice the, the the graphics. And this is actually looking really this good. Looks amazing. On here. It's not really flickery. It's 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 very solid. I mean, it's got this faded flickery look to it, but it's it's quite it's quite good. It's kind of got a a soft look to the yeah, colors. Yeah, absolutely. Like a really soft look. Yeah, it looks. Pretty much the same on the uh, on the X on the uh, on the X on the output there. Uh, Spiceware says RPGs also an early game use bus stuffing can run around collecting coins and buying things. Okay, so there was a lot of bus stuffing stuff. So this is not the first bus stuff, not the first bus stuffing game. Uh, CDW figured out the kernel timing for RPG. Oh, and see, look at this. So same dude, you got him. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. That's... So have you you've played Bomberman? Yeah, I played okay. Bomberman yeah. before. Although, <laughs> yeah, and then this is our our exit to the next exit level. There. So if you just put in like touch more uh, programming where he touches the door. Yeah. And it goes to the next. And it fills refills and it basically starts the game over. And if you touch one of the balloons, you, you you're die? dead as well. Okay. And then it would be kind of a fully functional game yeah that's all we need this is like 90 percent i like it, i like this um uh yeah you've got to use these these bricks yeah blow apart the bricks um okay but uh, yeah bomberman like it, it it fires through like the whole like thing you know like you have to like hide yeah but see this doesn't it's sort of like well you don't die from it yeah but it also only kind of goes like three it's like one two three it's like oh. if, if you do it here if i stand like here you see it won't hurt oh. me yeah, so it's, yeah. it's actually cool because it's way more tactical especially with these guys moving around i enjoy that because yeah. i gotta kind of be very careful yeah well with the bomber man you can get upgrades for yeah. longer ones and have roller skate upgrades and stuff um this game is not yet fully playable. You can't die, but you can drop bombs and kill enemies, which is yeah. which is amazing. 
Um, you can run it on the Stella emulator or from the Harmony cart. Um, so thank you, Chris, so much for passing this on so we can uh, demo it on the show. And play around, man. Yep. So let me talk a little bit more about bus stuffing. Now, you have to forgive me if I get any of this wrong or misspeak or misinterpret this um, because I am not intimately familiar with bus stuffing. And um, CD-W and Spicework can correct anything I say or add to it if possible. Bus stuffing works by driving the TIA video chip in the 2600 faster than is possible than just using the 6502 processor. The ARM processor in the Harmony cart, which is, you know, the, the processor that they've added to the Harmony cart, and some of the homebrew, uh, the more advanced uh, homebrew games, uh, is used to override the values being output by the 6502 to squeeze in more color changes and sprite updates than is normally possible. So, it's... The 6502 is... Uh writing to the TIA chip and it is cut and the arm chip is kind of heading off at the pass what it's writing just in time be before it writes it uh, the technique was actually invented back in the 80s for never released Atari graduate system and you can find out more here the Atari graduate the CX 3000 was a membrane keyboard add-on for the Atari 2600 that overlaid on top of the 2600 system uh, it says it's a remarkable little device that downloads a looping program into the 128 byte memory of the VCS and in turn simply turns the VCS into the graduates video support hardware. And that's what I was talking about yeah. earlier, where some of these advanced games, like this one, Boom, is almost barely not even using the 2600. It's more using it as a video output device and offloading everything onto the processor of uh, the ARM processor on the cartridge. And it's just passing information to yeah. the 2600 Should when we, it needs to write on the reset? screen. Do you, sure. want to, you can give it a go if you want now. Oh, I have a lot to say. Okay, okay hold it down. Cool. Got it. So you can keep keep playing it. Oh, i got to open the door. It's hot. brutal in here. It's getting hot. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So... Maybe he'll behave. Uh, uh, where we are. Uh, so K Skunk from the Atari Age forums describes bus stuffing. Uh, the graduate peripheral invented three cycle bus stuffing mode to achieve an even faster TIA register update rate than the Harmony's five cycle DPC plus fast fetch mode. This works by loading Y with FF at the beginning of the kernel uh, and why is, uh, is a, a piece of memory that is used to write information to uh, specific memory locations. So they're loading FF, which is, you know, 255, um, at the beginning of the kernel, and then having the 6507 execute three-cycle STY, store Y, which is the thing that we just loaded FF into, uh, uh, dollar reg instructions. At the critical moment when the FF is being written, the graduate hardware steps in and overdrives the desired, desired value on the bus. This avoids the extra cycle LDA, load A value, used by the Harmony. Uh, why is a CPU register? That's a better description than my babbling. Um, so it's, it's able to avoid a lot of extra instructions and do updates faster than normal by interrupting and putting in information while just before it's doing the right for putting the information on the screen. Uh, even though it seems pretty evil to override the 6507's bus, the designers, designers knew it was fairly safe because the NMOS 6507 used pull-up registers to drive ones on the bus which could be grounded to zeros without overheating the 6507. Now you're getting into hardware, which I'd know even less about. Um, unfortunately, there are certain consoles, mostly 7800 and juniors, that don't like this technique. Zack Attack has been developing a software workaround, but it is very difficult to use. 
I'm hoping for a hardware fix that will work on s the same on every console, because that would be very unfortunate um, that you would have you'd be releasing games that won't work on some people's systems. Yeah, man. Because it's like, oh, I have a 2600 Junior, or I want to play this on my 7800, and it's like, not designed for 7800. <laughs> um, you want to be as cross-compatible as possible, so that somebody doesn't, you know, spend 30 40 50 dollars on a game, Absolutely. get it home, and go, uh, I want Sorry, a refund, guys. or I have to buy a whole new Especially system. Especially for homebrew, because these are like, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's very it's a specific thing. It's very specific, and bringing it home and not being able to play it would be so disappointing. Huge drag. Or yeah. I guess ordering it online, getting ordering it, it on online. Your, yeah, yeah, you would. Unboxing your... Sending it back, yeah. That'd be so sad, and you'd, you'd have to give a chart of which which systems it's compatible for, like check your serial number, and uh, it'd, it'd be a nightmare. So obviously it's understandable that they would want to make it as compatible as possible. Uh, uh, perhaps you could put a shout out in your show for hardware geeks to help us get this working properly. Bus stuffing will open the door for tile based and smooth scrolling Ooh. games on the 2600, similar to the NES. Damn. Yeah, pretty much you can do NES style games. Damn. Because you could see this on an NES. Oh, for hell sure. yeah. This looks man. like NES. Uh, type. I like this character a lot too. I like yeah. his arms when he runs. He it, you name. see every once in a while that this screen shakes like that. That's to do with hardware here, yeah. not his program. Okay, cool. That's good and, to know. Uh, I'm working on investigating that. So, yeah, anybody uh, who has intimate knowledge of hardware, um, maybe even specifically the 2600, uh, the 6502 slash 6507 processor, um, definitely. Get in contact with Chris, uh, CD-W, CD-W on the Atari Age forums. And, um, oh, and Nathan Strum did the sprites for Thanks, Boom. Thanks, Nathan. Yes. So there, you're, you're liking the, the graphics. Nathan Strum yeah, is man. the man for graphics. I think the potential for this game is crazy. This looks like so much fun. Oh, yes. I'm I love Bomberman. And if this can go to two-player. Hell yeah. Or even four player i want to just play some more levels you know, <laughs> know. that's the thing it's uh, but I, I mean i understand it's a work in progress but yeah. god damn it's very cool <laughs> yes it and is it, you want to go through that door and get yeah some it's kind of teasing me here man <laughs> it is it is i also can't place a bomb on the door and is the door open up the same place every time I guess. um i believe i played it a couple times and i think it is yeah i think it's kind of like the same yeah it, it doesn't have randomization in it i think it's there every time um if the bus was only uh, if the bus was only a problem on select 7800s, I'd have gone ahead and used it. Uh, cool. Okay. So it's just not good on any 7800 at the moment, the techniques that they're using right now. So hopefully this progresses because this opens a whole world of games. Wow. Like massive. Like you can draw any, almost anything on the screen at that point. Yeah. That is amazing. So let us... Because we've pretty much gone through yeah, this. Man. People have gotten a good preview of the graphics and Definitely. what can be done with bus stuffing, given the right uh, environment. Okay, you can hold down the button. Done. Awesome. And we'll be going to Homestar RPG. <sighs> Whew. Okay. So let's switch over to that graphic. So this, is it the demo one? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. the one. Good stuff. So Homestar Runner RPG demo number two. Oh, it's it's a it's a it was a work in progress at the time, so it's going to glitch a bit here and there. So this was made by uh, Paul Slocum, who also did Marble Craze. Oh, and we did play Marble Craze about a month ago or a couple weeks ago. Um, in the early two thousands. I started and finished half of Homestar Runner RPG video game for the Atari 2600. Um, so for those who don't know what Homestar Runner is, it's he was a it was a uh, online uh, flash-based animated cartoon on the internet, and he had uh, a lot of you know characters, a lot of really crazy characters. Yeah, it was made by two brothers. Um, Chapman Brothers, uh, Matt and Mike. One guy did all the animation, one guy did all the voices. And uh, it ran 
very steadily for a long time, like eight, eight, ten years, I want to say. And I was like a devout fan. You were? Yeah. Like, out of control. I have all the DVDs of the Homestar Runner DVDs. We got Ninja Stars. Awesome. That's good. Um, so yeah, I was, uh, yeah, Trogdor, Strong Bad, all that good stuff. So Spiceware is very aware. So are there any other buttons? Only the... It's very limited work, work in progress. Because at the moment, we can. it looks like what we can do is we can see this screen. Status screen. Um, Inventory. And then other than that, I don't, it doesn't appear to be much. And they're kind of different areas. Like, I'm kind of wandering around. It's, it looks good, though. Like, yeah. This looks very cool. Um, and it's neat. It's kind of, it's an interesting one because it's like, I feel like I'm not moving around inside the world. The world's moving around <laughs> because I'm yes. always in the same spot, which is just a different style. It's kind of neat. Like, we got a castle here, right? Yeah. Which is, which is pretty interesting Got and then some. i believe this is like a candle Pet or pet oh yeah probably or something i, I was can't, thinking a pedestal or something on i can't it, but really I, think it's a candle. I can't do anything with it at the moment which is okay it appears to be um maybe another level like right here yeah so this yeah. brings me down there's and there chest. seems to be a chest but i can't i don't think i can no. open it yet you can't interact with anything except doors unfortunately at this, this point that's all right because yeah. work in progress man we all got to start somewhere <laughs> Yeah, but it's Strong a sad bag. work in progress. It's W I P R R I P. Definitely, uh, unfortunately. and it seems like um. So we got this kind of main area. So we'll water. See. Water is about. We kind of got the edge now here. It appears to be what will be a house. It's some. Can you go in? No, I can't. Oh, uh, okay. Some of them you can. You can, which is all right. That's okay. If we, we're uh, kind of exploring down this area. Matt and Mike Chapman designed the character graphics and some of the game tiles. If anyone is interested in taking the engine I wrote and making an RPG, wow. contact me and I'll send you the code. It can't be a Homestar Runner RPG, <laughs> but the code I've written so far is pretty standard RPG setup, which it is. It's got yeah, some, definitely. It's got all the tiles and things you can these go areas into. areas kind of move around Little in. trees. Looks like monochrome graphics a bit because it's it does have the blue on some of the titles, tiles. But everything is black and white, otherwise. Forest and the is a green bit of the labyrinth, man. Yeah, which is kind of cool. That's kind of fun. I like this. Uh, I have a scrollable tile map that supports very large areas. The beginnings of a nice inventory screen. A Definitely tiles. right here. Yeah, very nice. With a great... I love Home that Star graphic, Runner man. graphic. Like, that's a great, and the great scroll is cool. His bottom lip might be a bit too high. <laughs> a little maybe, bit. Maybe down a pixel. Everyone's a critic, man. <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> Game's crap. Start over. <laughs> the lip, man. That's all. <laughs> that's, that breaks it. <laughs> Broken grip. <laughs> uh, a title screen, a di dialogue screens, background music, and I think I've started on an encounter system. Oh. 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 I should have loaded on the first demo because it's a little bit different oh. actually we'll load that up too after um oh what's that is it, is it, is see, land? see this is an area but i haven't explored oh, okay uh, i've only explored everything at this point it's interesting the forests are very much like a labyrinth which yeah. is this is kind of interesting so they built in a labyrinth using the using oh, all these sort of go. obstacles right oh. and then we got like an area here which you kind of need to get to i don't know what's gonna happen if i go there but However, I believe it would require months of work to turn into a full working game, obviously. I, w I wanted the game maps to be large enough that you had a real sense of exploration. That might be a bit loud. I think this game's a bit loud. Let me turn it down a bit. But storing the value of each tile in a large map eats up ROM too quickly to be workable, so I made a map system that is laid out in commands. Interesting. The map commands can place tiles in a specific Whoa, location. A area. Oh. Oh wow! I've Look, never, I've never played it this far. I didn't think it was this big. Wow, this is a big map. Yeah, dude, he was not lying. Yeah. But it's a, like a labyrinth. Oh, that's cool. And then we we got all this stuff. <clears throat> uh, I'm, the map commands can place tiles in a specific location, place doors on the map that lead to other areas, and fill large areas with pseudo random generated objects and solid tiles. The most recent demo ROM uh, from 2003 is here. So this is from 2003. This is 15 years old. Wow, and really? I'm not aware of anybody that has taken up this this code and, and done anything with done it. Done anything with it because I've never seen another game as detailed of a map screen like this. Yeah, this is insane. Like this, yeah, it really feels surprised. like there's a lot of stuff to play around with. But nobody's picked this up. It's also um. <clears throat> 
I gotta say though, the only thing is, is that this method of kind of the world moving <laughs> is getting me a little, is a little bit dizzy. Uh, but that's okay. It's just because I'm moving so fast. Do you see? Another area? Yeah, oh my dude. God, Look, it's huge. Wow. You, and it's neat. I like that this area changes. is different color, so I can kind of orient yeah. myself. Differentiates. And, um, if we were playing, more open we would maze. definitely uh, draw maps if we. Oh hell yeah! We kind of taking... general maps, right? Yeah, if like, we we're taking this seriously. Here's the orange area, and then you go. This is the cave. This is the blah. This is the blah. Yeah, finding the edge of everything because, and there's a lot to explore. <clears throat> um, original planned features: play as Homestar, Homesar, or Strongsat. Homesar is my favorite character from uh, Homestar Runner. He's the guy who talks in gibberish. Yeah. And uh, oh no, he's not. What's that guy's name? Who sells? insurance that's my favorite character who's like who kind of looks like strong bad but like a dirty smelly strong bad <laughs> <laughs> ground trooper says i did some of that bus stuffing testing and i want to day my 7800 did okay with it say my did uh, my 7800 wow. did okay with it I just found oh it. cool okay oh you found some new areas yeah man wow. we'll see how far i get i am so impressed with the hugeness of this. A uh, large world comparable to in size to early computer RPGs. You're not kidding. No, dude, this is like third... Ultima 1 level kind of size, maybe? I think, I think there might even be another level. We'll see. Wow. This is the only thing that was like, if I had to get back. You're oh. screwed. <laughs> I mean, I could do it, but it would be Large amount of in game time. story text. Wow. Turn based gameplay. Oh. Mini games. Magic. This is what he wanted to do. Magic, weapons, HP, all the goods. Fight enemies from other Atari 2600 games. That would be great. That's that would awesome. be amazing. The ROM would also be released for emulators. Strong Bet is not playable because he's the villain. Uh, he says, sorry it's taking so long. I'm working on it as much as I can. Um, no, man, we get it. But it was it, this was canceled. I didn't find the follow-up information, but obviously this, this was canceled, and I think no Homestar Runner is all but dead they do like two updates a year now two or three sometimes they go on a string of like three or four in a row and then they're silent for yeah, a long well, time correct me if i'm wrong but they were like pre-youtube oh way and way, that's, way that's the thing is that you know they didn't switch over quick enough no honest. and and i remember i remember the like the days of like you know, as soon as YouTube hit, you're like, okay, this is clearly... Everything changed. This is clearly better. <laughs> yes. Be, uh, you know, downloading Flash and all this crazy stuff. Yeah. And it's just tough. It's a lot more to compete with today. I mean, when they were doing their thing, they were really the o almost the only... Yeah. They were so popular. Unbelievably popular. Because they could compress full cartoons onto something that somebody could actually Easily. watch on their computer. Absolutely. On a dial-up. And I mean, the idea of internet TV was just not even an idea. No. And now it's like, it's almost like weird when people are watching TV. Yeah. At least in my generation, it's like, oh, you have a TV? What, <laughs> it's is, like, what do you do what on you it? Do? Like, you subscribe to something? Yeah, like, why Why wouldn't you just watch YouTube? <laughs> yes. I remember my grandma was like, where do you, where's your TV? I'm like, I don't have a TV. <laughs> She's like, how do you just don't have a TV, baffled, kids? Right? You know, because it, but because it's so normalized. But yeah, before then, this was. I was I was uh, an early pioneer of stream live streaming internet television. Oh yeah. In 2003. 2003, I, you were doing that. I was doing that. live internet streaming television with like a talk, I did a talk show. That's amazing. I was the co-host. And I had a much more enigmatic uh, host. <laughs> um, and we had live bands. And wow. we had um, guests on uh, from, you know, the Vancouver area. And it was insane. It was crazy. And we had an audience, a studio audience. That's insane. Yeah, it was lots of fun. And we did it through... Had you heard of Winamp? No. Okay, that was... No, hold on, Winamp. I think yeah. I have heard of that. Yeah, it was... There was a video component to that that they released that could stream live video. Wow. And people used Winamp to tune in and watch it. Um, so that that was that was crazy. So let me load on the other version. Sure, we can check that out. Yeah. Let me just get it here. Get it ready here. Because um, there is something a little different on the other one. Going on. I forgot that it was. 
this is where this game's tough, man. I'm trapped. <laughs> I'm in my. It's as I said, it's labyrinthian. I need Ariadne to lead the way to the Minotaur. Yes. Because God. Okay. Man. And turn it off. Pop it out. And sweet. You were saying that you had something crazy happen had, to you. I had something crazy happen to me. So this would be the time to tell you the, about it. What was the craziness? I was, um, uh, there's this thing in, in, in Vancouver, just so people know, called the Chief, and it's like this. Oh, it, yes. It's okay. this mountain that you can sort of climb. It's not really that big, but it's a it's, full day hike. It's not small. Yeah. And, and people go up the face of it. And like, it's like rope climb it. Totally. I did not do that. But it's uh, always, yeah, it's always, advanced. it's always been a bucket list of mine to sort of go to the top of it. So I, I, I climbed this mountain with some friends yeah. and we, there's like three peaks and the third one is really far and it's pretty high. So we got to the top of it and it was this great, we had like cheese and we were just like <laughs> sitting there enjoying yeah. ourselves. It's a hike. It's, it's a hike. It was, yeah. a, it was a full day and I was thinking about lots of stuff as I was going there, having kind of reflecting on life. I got to the very top of the mountain and we were standing there and all of a sudden um, it starts raining and thunder started oh, uh, uh, roaring. And I was looking and I was like, we got to get off this mountain. We have to get off this mountain because I saw a lightning bolt that was very, very, very close. We kind of sort of ran to try to get off the mountain. And all of a sudden I got struck by lightning. <gasps> I'm not even kidding. I, I was I was moving. Oh, my God. And I felt it was the, the wor one of the worst feelings I can describe. Every hair jolted up. This is before you got hit. You could feel. It was, no, it was instant because oh, I had okay. no idea what was going on. And it was the thing that's messed up about getting hit by lightning yes. is that you don't know what's happened to you. <laughs> it's And I got hit right in the head. Of course. Yeah. Because that's how it's it happens. The, you know, the topmost part that it's going to hit. Yeah. And my, all my muscles contracted. <laughs> right. And um, it arced between a tree and the person I was walking with. And oh, Jeez, so I went they to, got a bit of it too. Like a little bit, but I got the full brunt. <laughs> and I like I went to the doctor afterwards, and they were like, that saved your life. You would probably because it arced to two other things. Yeah. Oh, rather than the ground and go right through. Exactly. You. Oh, and, it's, yeah, and it yeah, was yeah. on the top of the mountain. So, like oh, the last week, man, I've been so sick and out of it. And I had, but the problem Brain's was been scrambled. Oh my god! And I was just like, I don't remember walking down the mountain because it was it was, oh, wow. and I we took like twenty minutes. Like I I threw just, up. Uh, yeah, first 20 minutes of all, is fast. And uh, no, I mean 20 minutes of not doing anything. Oh, I you... threw up and I just sat for 20 minutes because I was like I can't move and it oh was Oh my god. It was like smoking like 90 cigarettes. You know that like <laughs> nicotine high? It uh -huh. was very much like that and I was out of it. Oh my god. And and it, the problem was it was raining so I had to somehow get down uh, through all these rocky and I don't remember the the, the walk down. I just completely phased it just... up. And, blanked out and then so all week my head's been really really weird it's been like a really strange wow. strange thing so um i've been telling people the story but it's always it's the funniest thing about the story is i'll tell someone that and then i'll go how's your week been <laughs> they'll be like no. and they're like i got nothing man but that was friday and so um yeah. saturday was terrible Oh. I ended up hanging out with a friend Friday night just yeah. to sort of like watch so that, you. And they actually, it was really nice. She came over and made food for me because oh, I was I was out of it. Yeah, but, I'd, um, want, I'd want to be watched. Yeah. Right? Like, take me to the hospital if anything happens. And I was so dumb because I was like, I'm probably fine. And then the well, next day I went uh, to the doctor and I was like, yeah, this is some serious stuff. And they checked my heart out. And, yeah. Um, but apparently the one that I got was not so bad. But they say that essentially it was it's the oh, yeah. equivalent of getting punched in the face by a professional boxer. It's that Whoa. that's the symptom because it's kind of like it, it's and all, all the concussions and stuff through your body. Um, so I had to teach last night and um, oh, wow. it was good. I was I'm doing a lot better now. You told the them week, that story? I didn't tell them that because oh, I was okay. like, I'm like, we're going to distract for everything. But yeah. anyone I've been telling this. But yeah, man, it's um, but the, the, the other the last little note and then we'll move on from yes. the lightning story yeah. is that um, most things in life, the worst thing is the build up. Because, like, if you're going to get, like, a right. needle or something, like, you, you spend, like, 30 minutes going, I don't want to get... But the thing about getting struck by lightning is it's the aftermath. Because I can't... I couldn't imagine what... Like, that I was going to get struck by lightning. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't. That was not a thing that was going to go down. So, apparently, everyone's not. been saying I should I should uh, get a lottery ticket. <laughs> but I yeah. I got the best thing now for those... It's still not high enough for lottery tickets. <laughs> no. So, you have a better chance of getting struck by lightning. lightning. So, you have to wait till the second one. That's right. On the second lightning bolt. But it's infinitely more possible when you're on the top of a mountain during a thunderstorm. Yeah. So rather you, than just walking around So, if you do want to get hit, get up there. But, yeah, that's that was my week, man. My question is... 
did you get a cool scar? No, I wanted oh. the Harry Potter thing, I, but it was it was I got struck right here. Oh so, no! So yeah. it's too bad. But. The, have you seen those scars? No. They're unbelievably cool. But damn it, not good. No, like, it's... you don't want them. Okay. Like, they're brutally bad. Like they they look like lightning. And I mean, it's it's cool to yeah. have one, I guess, but you don't want them. But it's it's the best thing to get, I guess, as a yeah. souvenir. I guess as a, like as a payoff or something. Yeah, James and Guest. <laughs> I, I is supposed I, to. I is supposed to. <laughs> His name is Erlan, and if you could spell it for them, A E R L A N. Because you would never guess that. <laughs> I want a white tuft of hair, spice wear. Oh yeah, that'd be I, a good bonus. It'd be like Holden Caulfield. But it'd be better at the front or something. Yeah, on the but, side uh, or yeah. But yeah, luckily I think I've pretty much uh, I pretty much ran out of this, the symptoms. Like I'm, I'm I'm doing I'm doing pretty good now. But okay, so that is quite a story. Anyways, we're well, back to the, but I, I needed to, <laughs> I wanted to tell him on on stream. So and CDW yes, yes. and Spiceware and everyone yay hey. and are you supposed to hey. <laughs> so this is a different version I think this is version demo I one can see from the, the the ad it's just the, it's the image too it's yeah a it's a little different we more Any dances hey um so there's intro and map demo so let's take a look at the intro let's see what that's like oh there's the there's the text he was talking about you encounter a party of strange characters you hear them talking Hey everybody, ready for hey a little everybody. RPG? <laughs> ready for a little RPG? Oh, I can't do it. Yeah. Ready for a little RPG? RPG? Really? Pricey gum? <laughs> <laughs> That's a little closer. Rotten prod. <laughs> no. Rotten produce guilt? Guilt? Question mark. <laughs> Poop Smith says. <laughs> Whoa. Was that I don't bad? know if you heard that. That was an almost car crash outside. Heard a, <laughs> a thump at the end, too. Ooh. Arpeggio! <laughs> Strong man. No, no, no. You know an RPG. Roll, um, person, uh, a gauntlet. gauntlet. Huh? <laughs> okay, I don't know what it stands... I'm not gonna do Homestar's voice. I don't know what it stands for either, but it's Dungeons and Dragons, and that's cool. I'm gonna be a warrior. Ooh, I wanna be a tavern wench. Who wants to be a tavern wench? Yeah. Come on, you wanna be like a rogue or something? Okay. So I can do his voice. Oh yeah, I wanna be a paladin. No cleric, no paladin. No wait, paladin. Bubs, those are so similar. <laughs> <laughs> Poop Smith. I'm dexterity. That's good. <laughs> of course you are. Now let's go find some magic keys or a scroll or whatever. Homestar Runner RPG. Coming early, 2004. Gotta wait for 2004, it's <laughs> To James. wrap around again, yeah. Uh, for the Atari 2600 by Paul Slocum and the Brothers Chaps. Very cool. Cool, let's see. So I don't know if the map demo is... Oh, it's a demo. Oh, oh, look, it's a different character. Yeah. A little bit... Oh, yeah, it's some not as... The, some of the things are a little different. It's not as... Not as quick. Looks similar, though. This no, is the main slow. castle that we were kind of messing around in before. Whoa. Oh, that was. Oh, I just press a button. It does this again. It does the opening? Maybe I shouldn't press a button. <laughs> <laughs> can you push Actually, it again, again, right at the bottom? Yeah, I think you can just move around. Yeah, you can't go inside anywhere yet. No. Let's try again. No. But you can't do anything else yet. Push the button to exit. Okay. So. It's got a little bit different graphics. The trees are a little bit different, like those bushy trees. Oh, good music, though. Yeah, so that's it. Wow, that okay, one. cool. Then there's a 32K one that I have as well. Because I was fascinated by this game. I was like, oh my god, is there another update? Is yeah. there something hidden that I didn't see? So let's see this 32K version out. of it. Demo 2. The uh, first one was Demo 2, and this is Demo 2, but this is 32K, this one. The other one was 16K, so this might be a little a different. Little more going on. Oh, this is uh, similar to what we were playing Did on. Did you move with... this fast before? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I think part of the dizzying. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. So, this does have more. So, this one is more advanced. Robot, robot, Pac-Man. And a little drawing of a robot... Roby attacks two. 
Home star, attack one, attack one, one arrows arrow. three. You got like 65 health. That's um, I don't good. know what C stands for. P, P, O, I, S, and then A through M, probably just to fill out. Press the button, oh, it just goes back. So, uh, so it's kind of letting you know that, hey, there could be an encounter. Oh, so this is very, this is sort of Pokemon-like. This is Final Fantasy-like. Oh, it kind of flips out a little bit, but it will come back, I predict, because I saw it for a second. Or not. Oh, you can kind of see it for a second. Yeah, what the, that's the screen. Sorry, I'm going to speed three, ah, uh, ten, experience, gold. For all those with epilepsy at home, <laughs> yeah, <sorry>. I recommend <laughs> turning your head. <laughs> we'll let, we'll let it, you know when we're done. But it is a little different. Um, yeah, it's very different. It's got it's some had... stats and stuff. Maybe when you do it outside... Oh, it was an encounter, encounter? inside. Yeah, oh, cool. Same encounter. Same deal. It's just so letting it's, you know. So it's got the randomization of the encounters. So let's go outside and press the button. See if it's different. No. No, it's just struggling to display. That might. Who knows where that's coming from? Could be anything. Yeah. Okay. Encounter. So there's a little bit more to this one. So I do. I, that's why I kept all three. Yes, Homestar is the only good thing done with browser animation. Die, Adobe Flash. Nothing against Substance Adobe. Yes. A lot of good Adobe stuff, but that was a very annoying Adobe uh, thing. Okay, so let's move on to the next one, which is, I will just switch it on the fly here, Avalanche. So I do need to plug in the paddles for this one. Okay, cool. So we can both play this one. Oh, sick. I think, maybe, no, at least, no, I don't think so. I think it's just one player. Let me get out the paddles, which I have conveniently on the wall now. Oh, amazing. Are these, are these classic Atari controllers? These paddles? are the real deal. Wow. I could hold those. Oh, I'll have to lean forward a bit. No problem. For all those at home, I don't, I haven't played that much Atari. I'm so sorry. This is my introduction. <laughs> this is the first time I've used these paddles, believe it or not. So let's, I'm just kind of. Oh yeah, unwinding just them. Just unwinding. So let's see. I did have trouble with paddles and the menu system. Cool. I'm just going to. There you go. Try this one. Cool. Because we're going to lean forward. Oh, there we go. No, they're working pretty good now. Great. So we're going to go for Avalanche. Come on. Yeah, I was having trouble before selecting the game. Oh, come on. Should I try? Yeah. Try with that button? Just the button? No, nah, I don't. Mine's not connected. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, gonna have to plug in a joystick first and then unplug it. And then plug this <laughs> and in. And then plug this okay, in. Okay, cool. Very no. I don't know why. Because the, the button works to get into yeah, here. Yeah, come on. Oh, wow. oh, dear. That's okay. We'll get there. One step at a time, folks. Hit select on the console. Did you try that? I, I did. Yeah, I he did. gave it a go, Spiceware. Yeah, it it's didn't It's good work. thinking, though, man. Yeah. Boom. Plug these back in. I hope this doesn't damage anything. So it'll be so sad. Okay. Hopefully we can try it. Try the button. Oh, it's this one. Here you go. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's get to this. I'm yeah, just... I don't know why. It's something to do with my paddles or my console that I can't select the game, but I can press the button to get into the so menu. So I'm not, not supposed started. to not let anything touch the ground? Is that the yes, idea? Yes. That That's the concept. Somehow the concept. I'm managing. God damn. Okay, so let's get to who did this. So this is a work in project by John Champo, who I will be interviewing at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo coming up. Um, so this is based on a uh, arcade game called Avalanche, amazingly enough. But this is Avalanche with an exclamation mark. Anybody can tell me why this has an exclamation mark? 
in the name of Avalanche? Because they're so excited about avalanches now. Could be, <laughs> but that's not right. <laughs> yes, I wish you could go there as oh. well. I, I would love to um, interview you for the um, for the channel. That would be amazing. But you're going to the other one. But I guess you got to divide your time um, between the two. And you went to the PRGE last year, Spiceware. Yes. Uh, Johnny is going 4,000 miles to PRGE. Yes. Oh, what a ch um, So this information was sent by John Shampoo. I'm not sure if you know the history or future plans for this game, but I figured I'd give you some background if you want some fun facts and tell your audience while you play. About the game. The game is 4K. Uh, it supports one or two players alternating. Uh, the game supports battle paddles or joysticks. To select which controller, press a paddle button to start a paddle game and the joystick button to start a joystick game. S note, since the paddle button is wired to joystick right, you can technically start a paddle game using the joystick by pressing to the right. God damn. But you won't get too far in the game. Oh, he made it to the last part. Oh, oh this is a live. hard game, man. Oh, when this you get down to one thing left, that's for sure. Uh, the game supports black and white or color using the black and white or color switch. The difficulty Oof. switches affect the paddle size uh, for each player. B uh, for large and A for small. So apparently this is the large paddle that you're playing with. Oh my god. I can't okay. imagine a small paddle. Wow. Okay. I th I, 558 is not bad it's for pretty first good. go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, the starting rock speed increases each level up to level 4, which is the hardest the game gets. Uh, trivia. Kaboom was inspired by Avalanche, and that is why there's an exclamation mark, because Kaboom uh, was a game that was made for the Atari 2600 because it was pr probably deemed that this was too hard to make back in uh, the late 70s, early 80s, um, because there's lots of colors and lots of things dropping. I don't, I don't know why they would think that that would be too hard, probably to emulate it perfectly. But anyway, this became Kaboom, the idea from Avalanche. Uh, it was originally ported over, uh, ported this over as a game to possibly... I was originally porting this game over as a game to be possibly included in the flashback. Not sure which version, but the deal with, the Atar with Atari fell through. I have a version with uh, 19, copyright 1977-2007 Atari copyright that was to be used. An Easter egg that was to oh. be displayed, uh, 2007 Champ Games. So, uh, this was to be included around 2007 in one of the Atari flashback uh, games. So, Spiceware is going to be in Georgia during that time. Uh, if, and he may be at the Houston Arcade Expo for those who are in the southeastern or oh. just south U.S., southern U.S. Um... Houston Arcade Expo is going on in October 20th-ish area. That's the same as the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, where I will be at, and oh, Tanya. Oh, man, for real. Uh, in the arcade game, the paddles get smaller when you reach the end of the level. This was removed from this version since it made the game too difficult. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> I mean... It's already hard, right? It's neat. Every time, it's an ascending tone, so every time that, like... It gets higher and it gets higher like and beep. higher. Uh, paddles are definitely the thing you want to use for these type of games. So yeah, the paddles are really control. interesting though, because like they're a little bit twitchy. I've never played with a paddle before. They're not supposed to be that jittery. When they're working perfectly, they should be rock steady. This one's not too oh. bad, but it's an added. Four ninety eight, man! Holy cow! Uh, just have a couple. I more like things. that it that it elevates as you play you know it starts out easy and then it gets hard like i like yes. games like that because then it's sort of you feel like you're you into it yeah that was the tough thing about the uh the anteater one is it's just like you just jump in and you're like holy <laughs> what throws you right in uh let's see the arcade game is black and white but supports colors through overlays my original implementation mimicked the overlay color bands, but I changed it to distinct colors per rock type, which which is better visually, because it would be weird if the colors changed as the rocks went down. I guess you could always make a arcade version, and uh, and uh, you know a 2600 version, so that the colors did change. 
Because I've seen that a lot oh. with games and just like um, Aardvark, where it had the arcade style and the modern style. The large rock graphic in the arcade is asymmetrical. However, the large rock in the 2600 is round. I originally had the arcade graphic, but decided to make it round, although I can't remember why. There is a hack of Avalanche that has more arcade-like graphics for the rocks. Future plans. I've spoken with Al of Atari Age numerous times over the years about releasing Avalanche on cart. We're still planning on releasing it sometime in the near future. So maybe this year for Portland Retro Gaming Expo. The plan is to release it using the Atari text label design circa 1978 and 79 trifold manual with box. The release will most likely be in a limited run to avoid any possible long-term <sighs> legal issues with Atari. Which, I, they're probably pretty laid back about it, but especially about a game that's, you know, over 40 years old. Uh, additional features may be put into the game, but it'll stay at 4K, and the intention is to keep it in the spirit of the games that were released back in the game time this game would have been released if it was programmed back in the late 70s. So very simple looking, nothing too complex in terms of graphics, oh. so it gets hard there, right? Eh? Yeah, this is a tough game, man. Additional features may include two players simultaneous. Ooh, nice. One player controls the even paddles, the other player controls the what? odd paddles. That would be very confusing. What happens when you get down to one? I guess whoever has oh, that God. paddle. Gets it's like to good play. luck. <laughs> yeah. Or there's always or maybe it goes in twos. Like there's always one for each person. And it deletes two at a time. Something like that. Or there's double the double the number, maybe. Like they're each on separate lines. That might be it. Um, one, and, uh, invisible rocks. Oh, God, how you do that? Invisible wow. rocks? Oh, you can see where it starts to fall, maybe? And then maybe. you have to memorize it oh as it disappears. Oh, my God, that would be brutal. That would be brutal. Yeah, more paddles. I paddle couldn't imagine games. these paddles, like, getting smaller, too. Like, <laughs> oh It's my already God. small, like, oh, my God. We will try that at, as our last game, is, is the small paddles. Okay, we'll, we'll see how I do says, hope this is useful. I'll try and join the Twitch screen, Twitch stream for a bit if I can. Oh. And I don't know if he's here yet or just silent. Give us a shout, man. So you got four lives left? Yeah, I do. Then it is my turn. Yeah, I've been hogging it. Fake. But you've been reading so. Yeah, that was fine. Got to get that information out so people know know what it's about. Somebody, somebody gave, me, uh, gave me some trouble. <laughs> the other day for not giving enough info for not giving uh not not a not enough oh. info but more about who contributed to the games ah that makes sense because you know you want to make sure everybody gets their credit you gotta and, give shout outs man yeah. people people put their hours their lives into this stuff exactly. um and with work in progress games i don't have a manual that i can just easily read it out so you have to I have to go through the the full forum posts, and sometimes they start new oh, new God. forum posts. So I have to go through those. So it's a little, it's tricky, and and I try and make sure everybody gets gets their due because some people uh, contribute, you know, programming techniques for kernels, or do the oh. graphics, and it's a very good community on the Atari Age forums, so that it helps get um, get these games done because people want these games to be the best they can absolutely so that it's fun for everyone and why not it's why not uh, help every everything out yeah you have to do them in order right <laughs> can't skip oh. oh here you go you gotta lean forward a little bit it's a yeah. bit killer that in that way it's the the classic old school video game pose that's right I'm so yeah, into this game <laughs> i the first one i did the best Really? Yeah. Beginner's luck. Something. It does exist. Yeah, it's a little, little wobbly. Not like too bad, but it does add to the uh... the experience for sure. <laughs> There's something just ah. so simple about pixel games. You know what I mean? It's like there one is. pixel is just dropping down. You got your <laughs> pixels. Yeah. Oh, they are round. They are round. Don't want to denigrate the balls too much but everything else point. is but when you is get square. down to the last one it's like just yeah, one it's pixel, a pixel man. yeah i do agree more paddle games because some some games just suit it so well like you don't need up down left right you just need left and right and and the ability to move with precision and speed 
with paddle games is so good. Like driving games are really good with paddle. And, yeah, um, I've never played a paddle before. This is the first time I've ever touched oh, a paddle wow. in my life right now. And it, I like it. It's a cool feeling. I wish it wasn't so jittery on the machine, but it's also, yeah. it feels like, I don't know. Ah. It's like I'm driving a, a like a fast car is how it yes. feels. Because every movement is big deal. Oh, yeah. And it's more of a, like it's an analog input. It's not a left or right. It's like, I want to move a little bit or I want to move a lot oh my god it's so hard when it gets to that that's okay man this is about where I started losing points pretty quickly did you make it to the second level no no it's just too hard I, I made it down to the every the time I've made it down to the ones that's it oh you gotta keep it on the top oh my god you gotta somehow ah but yeah, this it is, kicks you back a little is, bit. You're doing about as good as I did. About around here, I I was around three points. Um, when you get down to the one paddle, yeah, uh, this is it's where. So hard. Okay. Oh. Okay. Concentrate. Precision. Precision. Ah. Oh. One more life. Yeah, it's just ruthless. And I couldn't imagine if there were. This is where like. Oh my. Oh, that's it. So let's try out this one. <laughs> there you go. Oh I'll my Oh right. my god, okay. And we'll take we'll play two players. Are so you we can go back and forth. Are you ready, team? The jitter is a feature. You're actually wider. Uh kind of wider. It's kind of going get 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 them all. Get them all. That's right. You know what they say in modding? A feature is just a bug in a suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And this is a hardware bug, so it's a feature. It's it's, it's an added handicap for the well, exactly. really good players. Like, but I it's mean, the case with anything. It's like you're it's you I, work with it. I like I like that idea that this is a I feel like I'm just <laughs> passing right through them. Yeah. Oh. Is this you? Yep. How come you get Oh, it must be the difficulty on the left and right. No 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 oh Okay. It's rough, like, man. It starts auto starts for you after a couple seconds. That's great. I like that like you get the real paddles that it's like uh, cut to me. Uh, Whoa. Yeah, brutal. I can understand what you guys are talking about where this is just <laughs> ruthless. Yeah, I'm, I yeah, it's good he did make them wider for this. So this was the arcade. Holy crap. The arcade width? They must have eaten quarters like, oh I'm the other guy. No wonder it didn't give me any time. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, why would I? Why were we switching? There's two paddles. <laughs> I think I'm a little jittier, jitterier. Yeah, this paddle's. Uh... Come on, come on. Whoa, and you can almost. It appears as though there's two if you go quick. <laughs> I don't and think it, it won't it, act I as two. That's for sure. <laughs> it's motion blur. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Whoa, go, okay. Go. Yeah, it only it times out. It's like you have one in your hand, or should have one in your hand. Oh. And because um, this is plugged into one port, like the two uh, paddles, yeah. you can have four paddles at once. Damn. And there are four player games on the Atari 2600. Um, and Sp a Spiceware there um, programmed one of them. Oh my god, this is really <laughs> jittery. Let me try and... And it's one of the best games on the 2600 for just pure action. And I always try and break that out whenever I have a bunch of people oh. over for video game nights. Yeah? I always bring out uh, Medieval Mayhem. Oh, now it's better. Ooh, yeah. What did you do? You just it twisted it a lot, just back and forth, and it got all the lube moving around in there. Got it all. Because these, I did take them apart and fix them, but it just builds up the dirt inside because there's like a, a potentiometer inside to tell it where... Oh, it's getting bad again. Oh my god. Ah. Maybe it is helping me. <laughs> it's gone. Da -da 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 -da. No, it's not pixel. T yeah, I switched the Retron 77. It's the terrible pixel tearing that's going on. <laughs> no, it's no, it's jitter. It's jitter. It's not the Retron 77. Even though this probably would work in it because it's a small cartridge and it's not using anything advanced, so it should work. Did you see the war homebrew on the oh. Valley Astrocade? Ooh. 
That is a system I do not have, is the Bally Astrocade, and there's some interesting games made for it, so... If I see one, I'll pick it up, but, you know, I have way too many consoles already. Way too many. <laughs> and now I have a Retron 77, so I just added to it. Unbelievable. Oh, that's my game over? Or both of ours? Must be both of ours. Okay. Now, time to move on. That was... That was a fun game. A fun that's game. a cool it's game. Hard. Hard as hell. Give me those big paddles. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Okay. So avalanche. that was Avalanche. Lots of fun. And um, I think it's a, it's a very good conversion from what I've seen. Um, yeah. The arcade. It feels very pure, that game, you know? It's, <laughs> it's very, very straightforward, very right? It is what it is. Let's go back to... Oh, not that one. There we go. Let's go back to the... Genesis arcade style. Cool. For our last two games. Oh. Didn't give it enough time. So I think it's Daryl Spice Jr.'s games are up next, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is Timmy next. Man, saving it to the end, Spiceware. Yeah, leading him on. Like, oh, you got to stick around for your games. So this one is fairly old. So here you go. Ooh, this is a spice. early work in progress, but it's functional. You can finish levels. You can go level to level. Um, so this is Timmy, a work in progress by Daryl Spice Jr., who is in the chat right now. Um... And it is, he said, to note that Timmy is more a proof of concept at this point. Um, for fun, set the left difficulty to A. Oh, I did. Oh. And um, the sprites show up at the top center of the screen um, from where you are. So it's kind of a, a mirror of what's happening. But I'll turn that off in a second. Uh, updated on the fly to show what's detected around Timmy. Oh, detected. Okay. All right. Next level... Go up to a block, but don't get it. Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> I, will, I will do better this time. Okay, just slowly go up the ladder. Oh, it, doesn't, oh, it doesn't really show what's around it. But it, I guess it shows ladders and stuff, but not the, the pickups. That's what he meant. Um, the left three sprites show the platforms and ladders, while the right sprites show the ropes and slides. Oh, okay. What's... What's that thing at the very top? Oh, that's just the the add-on thing. Oh, I that, see. That I was just talking about. It's just kind of showing what's around you. Ah, cool. Um, this is from the Timmy blog. At the end of the year, I was approached by a company that's well-known for their April Fool's jokes that end up becoming real products, such as the iCade or the Tauntaun sleeping bag. Have you heard of the... Do you know no. what company this is? Okay. They, so, they wish to release yes, a 2600 no. game and had these requirements. Has to star Timmy, and bananas should be thrown. <laughs> cool. So that's the requirements. This is our challenge. Oh, it shows the play field and ladders. Okay, yes. Okay, this is interesting. Um, instead of bombs, we thought we'd set it up uh, so that an April Fool's prankster hid all the Think Geek products. Have you heard of Think Geek? No. Okay, it's a website that sells fairly expensive, but really kind of cool geeky toys usually related to um, pop culture pop, pop yeah. culture stuff um and they have a lot of exclusives like to them um but they also sell like you know tv yeah, show related yeah. things video game related things but I find the prices especially importing them to canada it gets to quite be. expensive but um, there's some cool stuff and i've bought stuff from time to time from them uh, Timmy needs to round them all up as to not disappoint any of the geeks. Uh, we plan to actually use Think Geek items, but what's currently in place are colored cubes with a letter code for testing my new routine, which does on-the-fly color conversion. The Think Geek's order numbers are in hex, so I plan to show the score using that. Some didn't care for this idea, so I added an option to let the player select decimal. I also whipped up the crude Think Geek logo, which Nathan would have expertly redone uh, before the game shipped. Nathan, the graphics expert. Uh, jump. Now, this is this is actually um, based on 
the look and play mechanics of a game called Jumpman yeah. and Jumpman Jr. for 8-bit um, systems. And I played the hell out of that game yeah. on my Commodore 64. It's one of my favorite games. And when I saw this, I was like, oh my god, somebody's porting Jumpman to the Atari 2600. And he's got like about 80% of the mechanics already in place for Jumpman. Wow. Um, other things are like little fires that you have to avoid, um, little bullets that come out the side, but those are, those are minor. He's got the ladders, he's got the things you go up, things you go down. It's got that floaty kind of mechanic where you float off things. Really, really cool. Um, Jumpman has upward and downward only ropes, which are differentiated by, by their color and zigzag pattern. None of those options are viable for 2600. So I uh, came up with the idea of using missile ball size setting to draw narrow ropes for going up and wide slides for going down. Yeah, man, that was, took me for a little while to figure <laughs> out, but now I got it, I'm just ripping through. I mean, it's circles, it's circles. It's yes. like, I think it's four levels. I think so. I, we needed to go so beyond Jumpman's world for banana requirements, so I started working on an idea of conve conveyor belts and switches. Conveyor belts would create... You want some gum? Oh, no, that's all right. Okay. Thanks for the offer. Uh, conveyor belts would create one-way platforms that could be controlled by throwing bananas at the switches scattered around the level. This isn't functional yet as I was working out the issues which cropped up uh, with using new size for the triple kit conveyor belts when the project ended. So what happened? At the end of January we stopped getting input from ThinkGeek. I continued working on it to, uh, due to the deadline, but we were getting more and more anxious as time went on. Finally, in February, we found out there'd be a man management shakeup at ThinkGeek, and the project was now in limbo. The project won't go to waste, though, as I plan to convert it into something else. Thanks, dude. Awesome. I'm planning to work with Batari and use this game to develop a bus stuffing bank switch format for the Harmony Melody. And we will be getting into that a little bit more in the next game so yeah like i said i love this mechanic and there's like yeah. tons and tons of levels in the in the 8-bit version well, this of is, this the thing i dig about this man is it feels like you're very explorative yes and it's there's, there's stuff i gotta dodge at the same time and yeah. now that i understand what all the things are <laughs> makes it a lot easier way easier i'm like oh it just took me a little while to figure out like what's this what's that and in the original game there's like moving ladders and pieces would disappear once you get one of the packages it's like oh i got the package oh now i can't go down that ladder again or up that ladder and you have to find a different route or find a different method of getting them in Absolutely. different orders so this is the conveyor belt. So you said you can only go one way. Can you go back on it? Oh. On the conveyor belt? Oh, you can. Okay. okay, so we didn't implement that. But it does it move you faster? Um, no. No, it doesn't really seem to do too much at the moment. It does spin, but it just but doesn't like, do anything. Uh, like if you check this out, obviously, um, <laughs> this here is the, uh, that's the ramp. It's a one way. And then this one is the rope, which fires me up and I can't oh, yeah, go back yeah. down. So, like, for this one... So you have boom. to kind of plan it out and move across it and don't stop totally. on the slide. I'm just down. looping. I've, I've done, yeah. a, done, a, done this one a few times now. Mr. Frick says, looks like Jumpman. Yes. And uh, in his blog, um, Spiceware, two above you, yeah, it's like snakes and ladders. Yeah, <laughs> Made into a video game. I bet that's where the inspiration for Jumpman came. Probably, a board game yeah. of snakes and ladders going up and falling down. Uh, can you conveyor on the belt bottom? Can you conveyor? Hmm. No. <laughs> I don't think so. No, it doesn't do... It's not functional. It's just like it a just, slide. It just looks like something. The but slides will fire you down. See, this... this you can't these, jump. Oh, and you can't jump in the game. The button doesn't do anything, No, does it? buttons does nothing at the moment. In the original game, you can jump a bit to... Because he's called Jump Man. Yeah, but you can kind of climb to the top of something and then, like, jump off of it. Uh, this game is not called Avalanche because uh, I have the wrong... Graphic. Um, Mr. Fix, this game is called Timmy? Is that Timmy! Right? Yeah. With, with an exclamation mark. I think people thought it was maybe named after the South Park character. The, yeah. The, the guy in the wheelchair. That's right. Timmy! <laughs> Timmy! Spiceware is answering. You know <laughs> Timmy! Uh, there you go. See, like, but it's not. It's named after the mascot um, from Think Geek. 
obviously the name's going to change when he yeah. updates it. So, so yeah, this probably be from... some other name with an yeah, exclamation mark. The only mark. thing that I'm wondering about now is what this thing is. So yeah, you can download this version. Um, oh, that's the switch that you had to throw bananas at. Can you throw them anything? No, I no, can't. No. Okay, so that wasn't. That oh, that makes sense. So I would come here, but like, and then it would start going the right way. Fire me up. Because it was probably going that way to begin with. That was the plan. So you couldn't get past it. So yeah, you can download um, this one. Um, not you can you can't download the first two games that I played. Um, you can download avalanche or did he send that to me no you can download avalanche i think yeah because that's fairly yeah that's a ways back just look in the forums for avalanche um you can download this one as well you can download the uh um home star runner uh games um but you cannot download the versions the first ver the version that i showed you of aardvark um but you can download an older version of aardvark um, and you can download um, the next game as well. So I think we have gone through this one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've played it. I don't need to I've play gone it. through it like maybe like five times. times. It's very cool. Yeah, it's great <laughs> mechanics, like for the base mechanics of it. Well, I am very eagerly looking forward to cool. that one developing. That's going to be a cool game, man. Yes. So the next one is... Frantic. Now Ooh. this is fun. Um, this one is also by Spiceware, and you can download this one. Um, but he did make a very special version. Like the last one that was released was 2014, 0404, so four yeah. years ago. Um, but it wasn't working on my Harmony Encore. Um, it works on the Harmony, but not my Harmony Encore. So this is. A special version <laughs> that Spiceware made for me just today when I let him know in a panic that, Dude. oh my god, that it doesn't work. So Spiceware, thanks, man. You're the man. Thank you so much for coming through because I would have had to play an earlier version of it, which didn't have everything that this one does, but it was pretty close. It was pretty close, but it, it's, uh, it was very awesome of him to, to make this version. So there Whew. you go. Okay. So this uh, little little background before you start. This is kind of based on two. It has two games in one. Okay. Um, one is Berserk from 1980, an arcade game, and Berserk did come out for the 2600. So that's the one on the left, the maze on the left. The one on the right is a game called Frenzy, which was a sequel. Okay. To Berserk. Cool. Which use very similar mechanics, so why not combine both in one and make it give it the it option? Makes complete sense. So we'll start off with you know, basic, the basic whatever. one, the Berserk version, and he called it Frantic. Um, yes, this one is available at Atari Age, or more specifically through uh, Spiceware's blog. So if you just search for Frantic and Spiceware, it should come up with his blog and look for the April 4th, 2014 blog and this will be the version we're playing cool. and it is awesome so the options here for um the berserk version of it oh he's updated with this version too yeah. so if you have a harmony encore uh then you can play this one no let's go back to the left one cool do the I mean, basic should i give so it a go uh let's look through the options first so we got robot shots so they can four, fire four at four. once Stealth, uh, stealth. Is, I'm not sure what that is yet, we'll but we'll out. read it. Lives, three. Let's crank it up to five for your first one. So that bonus you can life. keep it at one, keep it low, so you get bonuses. And start. And great graphic at the top. So you're the little dude, and you... Oh, do I have these? There, sorry. Wow. There we go. I had it set wrong. So how do I... I gotta just get out of here and just dodge these guys. <laughs> Actually, That's let's a... restart it. Just die a couple times. Okay. Yep, I know. <laughs> I caught it. It said, change your difficulties to B. It's like, oh, oops. One more time. Or, what? Does, Does it have five? Oh. Hold um, on. Oh, I think we're good now. Okay. And we're on color, black and white. I think I'm good now. Okay. 
Um, oh no, not in the store. None of these are in the store. Um, these are all work in progress games. Okay. Uh, TV type, oh, see, diagnostic up? display, black and white on, color off. Yeah, we want B off, B off. Okay. So yeah, shoot the baddies, exit out. Don't touch the walls. Okay, okay. Yeah. I can only shoot up or down. Oh, no, nope. I... all eight directions. Okay, so let's oh, cool. okay. talk about this. Um, okay. So, difficulty switches. Um, black and white. Does the diagnostic display on or off? Uh, left control. Um, frenzy special room a test a is on b is off so we've kept it in the off uh right control stress test a is on b is off we have it on off so that i think we still have the unlimited lives on because you haven't died yet i got this ghost man i think we do have to restart it hold down the button okay got it Okay, so go down to 2018, go down to frantic, frantic, go down to the bottom, and load that one up, and just leave it on the defaults, and go to start. Or, yeah, three lives, that's fine. Yep, there we go. Uh, select return to the menu, actually I could have done that, and reset uh, starts the game. So, I didn't uh, get any information about Berserk, but let me open it up from Wikipedia and go through it really quickly for people who have not played Berserk. Oh, this is cool. It is a game that was available on the 2600, and they did a pretty decent version of it. It's not bad. It's really a lot of fun. Um, and so, like I said, it was uh, released in 1980 by Stern Electronics. Uh, Berserk places the player in a series of top-down, maze-like rooms that can contain armed robots. Um, player controls a green, a green stick man. It's not Ooh. green in this. Using a joystick and firing button that activates a laser-like weapon, the player navigates a simple maze filled with many robots who fire lasers back at the player character. Oh a player can be killed by being shot, by running into a robot, or an exploding robot, or get electrocuted by walls of the maze itself, or be buying being touched by the player's nemesis, Evil Auto. Yes. And Evil Auto is like a thing in video game lore. Whenever something is running after you in a video game, it's, it's, called evil, it's Auto. evil Auto. Um, Which is this thing right here. Yep. Folks. Evil Auto, On. the function of him is represented by a bouncing smiley face. Is, quicken, oh. is to quicken the pace of the game. Um, which was good to eat quarters up, because these are all arcade games. Yeah, don't touch the exploding. I see. That's, that was the issue. Is it? Is it uh, starting over? Are you I, running out of lives, or is no, it infinite? No, I seem to be... Hmm. Interesting. Oh, Spiceware says David Aspire 8 did the graphics for this game. Uh, oh. Mr. Fix says, love Berserk. Oh, it does, it does start over. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Um, auto, is un uh, auto is unusual with regards to games of the period and is that there's no way to kill him. Auto can go through walls with impunity and is attracted to the player character. Oh, you got shot. Yeah. If robots remain in the maze, Auto moves slowly, about half the fa as fast as a humanoid, but he speeds up to match the humanoid's speed once all the robots are killed. Evil Auto moves exactly the same speed as the player going left and right, but can move faster than the player going up and down. Down. So no matter how close Auto is, the player can escape, as long as they can mo avoid moving up and down. But, uh, yeah, so there's still one a robot left in the maze right now, so Evil Auto's kind of slowish, so you can kind of avoid him to go get that guy. But once Should I be clearing every room? I mean, I think you get bonus points for it. Um... Let's see. The player advances, escaping from maze to maze through an opening in the far wall. Each robot destroyed is 50 points. If all the robots in the current maze have been destroyed before the player escapes, the player gains 10 points per robot. Um, so you get bonus points for destroying the robot. So, yes, it is better. Ooh. Oh my god, the cat just 
cat just flipped the hell out. <laughs> it knocked our camera and everything. I don't know if he made it on camera, but he was, he was flipping out. Working there. at home, folks. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Let me just reposition oh the my camera God. there. That was fun. Always oh my makes God, for okay, great I'm YouTube dying. videos. Okay, my turn. Give it a go. And you can keep reading from... The game has 65,000 rooms. Okay, it says that the game has uh, 65,536 rooms, which is a, a 256 by 256 grid. But due to limitations of the random number generation, there are fewer than 1,024 maze layouts and 80, 876 unique. It has only one controller, but two-player games can be accomplished by alternating with the joystick, which is what we're doing. That makes sense. Landed right on top of me. Oh, it's, yes. it's vicious, man. <laughs> you got to kind of be, be far away. Um, yeah. okay. As a player's score increases, the color of the enemy robots change, okay. and the robots can have more bullets on the screen at the same time. Mm. I see. So ultimately, it's like you're trying to get as many points as you can. Before having to be forced out of the room. Yes. And then and then it's going to get harder the more points that you've got. So. Right. Once they reach the limit of uh, simultaneous on-screen bullets, they cannot fire again until one or more of the bullet detonations. They take detonates. turns. <laughs> the limit applies to the robot as a group, not as individuals. Oh. And um, they say that, uh, oh, shit, man, you're in places that I've never been. <laughs> you're just doing good. Uh, not too bad. I did play um, Berserk on the 2600 quite a bit. Back in the 80s, before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> before I existed. Two different versions of the game were released. In the original version, the sequence goes as follows. We have a dark yellow robot that don't fire. We have a red robot that can fire one bullet, which is worth 500 points. And a dark cyan robot that can fire two bullets, which is 1,500 points. Oh, and then, in, robots. and then in this version of the game, after 5,000 points to the end, Evil Auto doubles his speed. Uh, so I feel like this is this game is all about avoiding Devil uh, Evil Auto. <laughs> yes, yeah, and you don't want him. While robots remain in the maze and twice as fast as the player after all the robots are destroyed. So basically, after five thousand points, the difficulty ramps up. Yeah. The revised uh, version, which had the much larger production run of the two, features a longer color sequence um, after the cyan robots. So it's just got some new, different ro different colored robots. I can read them all out, but... Is this Frantic you're talking about? Um, or no, just later versions? Later versions. Oh, not Frantic. Um, so there you go. Cool. So let's talk about this game in particular. Um... So the latest updates to this game, Big Auto's face will update launches e extra evil autos with very primitive movement logic. Uh, hit the power plant and robots can't move but can still shoot. Hit the central computer, robots can't shoot but will ran randomly move. Now these are in the frenzy part, so we'll get to that in a second because it's quite a bit different. Um, factory doesn't do anything yet, but if you hit it, the animation stops. Um, another a very cool uh, a, a part of this game is that he has put something in called Luma Boost, and what that does is because when there's more than one or more than two uh, characters on a line, players on a line, um, you might notice in Atari games they start to flicker because the system can only do two, two at a time. Unless you're doing bus stuffing, but that's a whole oh. other conversation. Um, so what he has done in this game, and I'm, I suspect a number of other games have done this since, is that he increases the intensity of the colors when they're flashing so that it matches the intensity of when they're not flashing so you don't notice it as much. And it does make quite a difference in the game, I've found. Um, so it's really, really uh, innovative. I'm not sure... If that is in 2014, oh. how advanced that was, or how how widespread that is in use now, but I'm sure I'm sure it is. Um, and he says he's act, uh, Spice uh, Daryl Spice Jr. is actually going to be getting back to working on this really? game. 
because this would, the last build was 2014. Thanks, Darren. I like this game, man. I, I'd say so far this is probably my favorite of the of the evening. Oh yeah, wow. Um, because gotta save for the best for last. Yeah, man. I like killing <laughs> robots. It's, I mean, <laughs> they I, deserve to it's die. Kind of that simple. They, they took our jobs, so <laughs> yeah. They can't take our jobs, but and and I do because <laughs> we're artists, so um, a little harder. I, I I have you ever seen that video of the computer that did an edit of a movie really? on its own. I imagine it was terrible. It was terrible. It was all based on movement. Oh, something big is moving. Let's cut. Time, time to cut there. It's like, And okay. even then you have to, like, there's so much setup that you yeah. have to do for that. It wouldn't be something you'd ever want to. There is no emotion, like, based no. behind it. Like, the, the computer didn't understand why it was cutting. It just, like, oh, something I need to cut. It was terrible. Uh... So the Spice Wars said uh, uh, Thomas Yentz, Yentz came up with the idea for Luma Boost during Stay Frosty 2. So it was for a, a Spice Wear game, um, but it was, but uh, Thomas came up with it, and that's that's absolutely brilliant um, because things would just get faded, and it just looks awesome on here. It just kind of gets a little oh. little see through, but the colors stay the same. Um, and then Ice Post is fighting with Daryl. Says, "No, it was me. I came up with it." Oh but... no, we gotta we gotta fight in the chat. <laughs> if he mentioned it first, then we independently came up with the same suggestion, which oh. which happens a lot with um, innovations in technology. Absolutely, it's a zeitgeist. It, yeah, it's it's when you have set the stage for the next level of creation of innovation. All the things are there for taking it to that next level. But if they weren't all there, people would not think about That's right. it's, getting it to the next You've got to push past thing. these thresholds. Yep. Actually, let's take it to the next... The next bit. Oop, I'm on start. Yes, let's take it to the frantic. Let's take this to the next. Now let's leave it at the defaults for now. Good idea. And play it as uh, at its defaults. And let me read about this. Um, Actually, I'll go back to that. He's going to be coming uh, back to it, but he's going to be uh, making it on a new programming platform called Spice C, which is spicy, which wow. is, you know, named after him. Dude. Oh, no. Oh, oh. Freaking out. I swear it's on B. It's on B. Oh, well. Maybe there's, there's some flickery... Left wow, over. this but is cool, man. For most of the time, it's even... fine. Um, oh, God. So he'll be converting it over from uh, DPC oh. <laughs> DPC Plus <sighs> to uh, Spicy. Oh. Yeah, maybe there's some leftover. I didn't test it extensively, but I tested it a little bit, and it was a lot better than before. Is it? Is it dead? Oh no. Hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, uh, it's oh. appearing there we go. from you okay. guys' end. There we go. Um, so selecting frenzy enables two extra options. So we're we're playing the frenzy mode here. Uh, homing. Select the number one to three de denotes how many times a tank shot, square in oh. shape. Oh, that was fast, eh? Nah, this is cool, man. There's so much more stuff going on. Because, like, this deflects. These are, like... Oh. And so I can actually use angles to kill people. Which right. Which is pretty cool. And That's then the other tactics. factor is, like... You can um, shoot through walls. Yeah, too. so, like... But the thing is, right, I can't shoot... Like, I could technically shoot through that wall. But you hit yourself. <laughs> That's right, which is the mistake I made last time. Ah. Uh, oh, and then see, running into things. Uh, so the tanks shoot uh, homing missiles that now. Oh my god, okay. Once you get to a high enough level, I think. Um, and they can change directions to home in on the humanoid. X means the tank shots cannot change directions. So you can select how many of them. Or how many times oh. it can change directions. Wall flicker. How fast reflective walls will flicker. The topmost option will change its flicker rate to show you how it looks without having to start the game. We'll take a look at that at the menu. Non-flickering walls are destructible Ooh. in the frenzy version of the game. So, go up to the homing missiles. Okay. And go up to three, so that they start turning, and go to wall flicker. Yeah. So go down to three, two, one. Now it's flickering fast. You can see in the maze at yeah. the top right. 
Now change the flicker. No, go back to full flicker. Change it to two, and now three, and now it's really slow, now oh. super slow. So pick whichever one you like the best. I'll try two, three. Let's see what that's like. That's really cool, and it like yep. and updates as well. Now let's look at these other one. Robot shots. That's the maximum number of concurrent shots. So maybe take it all the way down to simple because it is a pretty hard game. Maybe one. And stealth. Invisible robots. Oh. Uh, maybe not yet. Yeah, <laughs> well, man, the, the possibilities are Maybe crazy. take homing down to one. So it only can change directions in one. Okay. Yeah. Um, lives, that's pretty straightforward. Bonus that life, nice. that's very straightforward. Okay, let's start it up again. And this should be a little bit easier for you. There you go. Um, okay, so this is about, I'm going to talk about oh. Spice C. Um, this is from Daryl's Spicy blog. I started on my Spicy framework. If you've not heard of it before, it's a new 2600 development environment to make it easier to write games. I, it'll be like Batari Basic with pre-written kernels that you only have to write and you only have to write the game logic. It'll differ in that it uses kernels written to take advantage of CDF bank switching as seen in Draconian, Super Cobra Arcade, and Mappy. And all of your game logic will be written in C instead of BASIC. The game logic will run in the 70 MHz ARM processor found inside the Harmony cartridge and Melody board. So it takes advantage of the super fast, well, relatively super fast, compared to the Atari 2600. Ooh. And then CDW here, who is was or still in the chat, Ooh. explains about the naming of CDF. CDF stands for Chris Walton himself. Uh, Daryl Spice Jr. and Fred Quimby, the F, C, D, F. And it's an enhanced version of DPC Plus bank switching, which allows for support for digital samples, as you heard in Draconian and Mappy, which has um, music samples. Ooh, I believe. I supposed to can correct me on that. And for f and fast jumps. Uh, jumping between banks, I'm guessing. Uh, it, is be it is being used to implement Draconian. Well, he wrote this a while back. And another section of Daryl's blog about CDF. So Chris Walton, creator of some awesome homebrews such as Juno First and Chetri, which is... Um, uh, oh my god. Chetri's the, the, the block game. Wow. Oh <laughs> Tetris. I, hold on, oh I just god. killed the, the main guy. One more to go. There you go. You killed the main guy? Yeah. There was like a, the, a big huge guy? What's the auto guy? What's his name? Oh, you killed Evil him? Auto? He just, I just, I just shot him and he kind of oh, like... Oh, I think you can drive him back. Because like... And he'll reset. Like, yeah. Like oh. you're not killing him. You're oh, I see. I see. Resetting him a bit. Um, so, let's see. I decided... So oh Chris Walton, God, creator of Awesome Homebrews... And I decided to take what we've learned creating the bus stuffing driver and come up with an improved version of DPC Plus called CDF. CDF features fast fetch mode, five cycle TIA updates like DPC Plus, 32 data streams, double that of DPC Plus and bus. In DPC Plus and bus, after drawing the gameplay area, I had to reassign the data fetchers to display the score, lives, level, etc., which took a bit of overhead. With 32 data streams, there should be enough to go around with having, without having to reassign them mid-screen. Oh. Identical data streams. All data streams work exactly. Oh, well, there's a lot of stuff here. <laughs> but it's a huge upgrade, and it's awesome. This is cool. And so oh what he's going to do after developing the new programming environment is to redo this game from scratch with all the new updates so that he'll be able to have the voice samples in the game because there's voice samples in the arcade game. So oh, I killed myself. I think that's... Oh, <laughs> you killed yourself. Oh my god. It's, I was down to like one robot too. Oh, and they're still, oh, I'm dead. They're still talking about um, you, you who, came, go, man. who came up with it first. <laughs> <laughs> they're checking dates in the forums. That's funny. Uh, I don't think I'll turn on stealth. No, man, just give it a go. See what it's like. This is the coolest Whoa, version. Almost ran into it's that. It's tough, though. So it has a lot 
more. It's got a lot, of, a lot more stuff over. going on. It's but it's a lot more possibilities, man. Because if you shoot up against those reflective things, it'll yeah. it'll bounce. Well, you can use them to your advantage, though. That's the cool part. Right to get angles that you couldn't yeah, before. Yeah, that's how I killed myself. So like I could bounce off this and get him. Exactly, just like like what you did there. And then if you shoot that big oh, guy... he was able to shoot through that wall, the robot. Oh my god, it's coming I, back at him. That's right, because some of oh, these... bounces back and forth. That's right. And, but, and then these ones you can shoot through. So, like, for... Yeah, for these, you can you can just shoot through the wall to kill him. him. Yeah. yeah. Back! <laughs> and I think when you... Yeah. Whoa. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa. It's tough. Man. You have to be on it right away. Oh, yeah. Ugh. And then you run into the wall sometimes. But you can almost... But you can build your own pathway if you want to by... True. But so can they. They can get through the walls to get you. That's right. So, which is fair, you know. Oh, there's the homing missile. So it changed direction once. So I think three would be a bit more fair three. for them. But all you have to do is kind of dodge a little bit back and forth, and they've used up. And you see, when you Whoa. enter in the first time, it's reflective, so you go. can't go back the way you came. Yeah. You just... Oh, so it blocks it off. But now that that you died, you can technically go back. Oh, so they give you a bit of an out. Yeah, but oh, but but only but after you die. Exactly. It, it, as if like, oh, this is too hard for you. Here you go. Yeah, good luck. Because you died. You can go back home. <laughs> Oh, you can shoot an exit as well. I was thinking that. You can shoot out it? Like, you, you can build an exit. Like what? if you. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, it's, it's, that's rough. Oh, look at ah. this. You can see you can go back. But... Oh, a uh, little bit of trouble. I think there's too many too many robots because after you shoot a couple... It becomes fine. Ah. Oh, my God. He's right on top of it. Oh, it makes a minor ting when it changes direction. Oh, I'll have to listen for that. It's kind of noisy, right? Oh, that's what that ting is. Hello! Uh, one more life left, I think. We're in the last game of six. Yeah, because we have to leave like now. We have assigned seats. <laughs> Where are you going? The Orpheum. The Orpheum. Whoa! Like, what, like a show? Star Wars yeah. Live. Star Wars Live. Oh, the orchestra. The John Williams full scores. Wow. Yeah, so let's crank that up to three. Put on stealth. <laughs> Robot shots four. We gotta leave now. Fast Homing's death. gotta be on. <laughs> stealth is <Fast> on. <laughs> yeah. Keep it on three lives. There we go. Now this is gonna be. Oh my god. So they blink in and out. Oh, dude. Oh, they just. Oh, when you shoot? No. When you kill one. Oh my god. This is. Oh, after you kill one, you have to memorize the other ones where they are. Oh, I almost got all of them. Wow, that's hard. That is it's, a, that's a whole other level. I love though, the, oh. yeah, when he first comes in, I love too that like um, essentially the game then uh, you can rank rack it up. It's like oh, it scales yeah. really nicely. Yes. This is a really this is a really cool game, man. Oh yeah, this is like changing directions. Yeah, this is really good. Yep, too many things cause the screen jumping. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. So needs a little. I mean, this isn't. These are all work in progress, and that's why you know. And it's good to... This feels really complete, though, man. This feels really good. I know. Really amazing how much is already in it. Yeah, this is Daryl Spice Jr.'s game. Mm -hmm. oh, I have to this shoot my cool. way out. Oh, man. Oh, my God. And, and, and dodge the stealth robots, man. Oh, there we go. But he said Whoa. you can build your own exit, so if you wanted to, you uh, like could... Just out of... Oh, yeah, it would take a little bit, but you could... You could build a way out that's right wow this is challenging wow yeah it still needs the digitized speech yeah oh wow boing 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 oh i bet one of the levels is an all reflective wall so you can't shoot anywhere or else everything's going everywhere and you said there's so many levels what 256 time by 256 or maybe that was the other that, one that's that I was reading. that's the other one that's the arcade but who, who knows how many he's gonna put into this wow Definitely an amazing, amazing game. Yeah, man, that's yeah. hands down. So that was your, your favorite really of the nice. night? Definitely. I think so too. It's, it, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a more complete one. I mean, I like, I like Aardvark. It's really nice looking, but it's so hard. Yeah, I think Aardvark and this feel, but I guess the other ones, they it's, almost un, it's unfair because the other ones are kind of like, they almost feel like proofs of concept. Yeah. They're dying, they're begging to have some, <laughs> some, some updates. Yeah, programmer yeah. come in. Yeah. 
Mr. Oh, Fix says, says, this has that many rooms, 256 oh, by 256. Oh, wow, that's a lot of rooms. Mr. Fix says, this would have sold millions if it had been released back in the day. Okay. This one, yes, it yeah, would have dude. outshone every single game ever released i could i could i could play this this for hours just yeah. going around and starting out on the easier level right. ramping it up and then when you get bored you can slowly scale yeah that's cool he's what he said i wasted so many days in the sunroom playing berserk <laughs> by sunroom do you mean like the room in your house that's the sun, yeah. or the sunroom could be like an arcade could be didn't capitalize yeah. it though he must have had it like on the 2600 maybe yes where they relegated the the console to is the sunroom. Have it out there. Yeah, keep it away from there. us. You need you need to exercise. Okay, we'll put it in the sunroom. Yes. So I'll, I'll get some vitamin D and play my games. So that is it for now. Uh, we will be back on Saturday. Yes, not not Friday. Uh, we'll be back on Saturday. And the games that we will be playing on Saturday quickly. Uh, it is. A whole bunch of games that got overlooked that wow. maybe didn't get the attention they needed or why didn't they get the attention? So we're going to look at those. Uh, Pickle, Dragon Racer, Road Duel, who is uh, programmed by a legally blind person. Wow. So that's an interesting one. Uh, Give Me My Pancake <laughs> and Defend Your defend your Castle. Cool. So that'll be at 1 p.m. on Saturday, Pacific Time. Or 4 p.m. Eastern Time, I'll you know post it on the Facebook stuff, and uh, Instagram and all of that, so you remember. And also in the Atari Age forums, if you want to follow my thread, and I'll update it there. And uh, Mr. Fix confirms it, it was uh, it was a, it was a sunroom, a room <laughs> filled with windows. Ah, very. That'd be hard to watch the the games if it's like the sun's in your eyes yeah. or sun's on the screen. But that's it. I do have to leave. We yeah. run over about 16 and minutes. James will let you know if I develop superpowers from, yeah. <laughs> from my... <laughs> from, Probably not. Usually no. people just get sick. Yeah, this is... This Rolling is... in toxic waste, they don't get superpowers. No. Like on Family Guy. You just die. <laughs> they, you rolled in the toxic waste and then you just died. Or you get bit sick. by a radioactive spider and you just, you just die. Yeah, it puffs up a bit. That's about it. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank, no, thanks, everyone. Thanks, this Mr. Fix awesome and day. Spiceware and CD W and so many others. That, well, thanks uh, for making the game, Spiceware. Yes, I love, love Best your in games. slot. I'm, I'm not kidding. I supposed to Ground Trooper. Um, who else came in here? It's good they're colored. CD W, like before. And I hope I didn't miss anyone, but and also the people who don't type and just kind of watch. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, too. Thanks for hanging out. And um, this will be posted tomorrow on YouTube if you missed some of it. And we'll see you on Saturday. Are you going to be here next Wednesday? Oh, I'll probably be around probably. next Wednesday. We'll yeah. see. We'll check it out. We'll see. Uh, if but Wednesdays are generally good for the me. Easy ones. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thanks for hanging with us, and we'll play some more games on Saturday. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye.